Nanajwa Misa in Atlanta. Good morning, Judy from Coventry, UK. Good morning, Pauline from Reading, England. Good morning, Nelly from Amsterdam. Okay, I'm already answering. Hey. Hi, Enough Miriam from Ireland. How are you? Hi. Oh, hi. hi. Okay. Global present. <laughs> Good morning, Elizabeth from Canada. Good, Elizabeth. Yes, Canada. Canada is a large place now. Where is that? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, hi. Good morning. I'm from uh, New Mexico. Hey, nice to meet you all. From Wisconsin. New Mexico. Who's on New Mexico? Can you please uh, send me your email in our chat? I'm looking for somebody to run a chapter in New Mexico. Okay. If I can figure it out. Okay. Let me give you the email address. Chapters, just the word chapters with an S at the end. At the at symbol O U R A D D I dot org. Chapters at our ADDI.org. Those of you on here that don't have chapters in your region, please use chapters at our ADDI.org to uh, contact me so we can open up chapters. <coughs> Good morning. This is Curtis from Jamaica. Welcome, Jamaica. Good morning. Are you saying from Toronto? Are you saying chapters in each state or just each country, like just the United States? I'm sorry? Uh, so oh, are you saying chapters, you want to open chapters, for example, in the states in each state or just per continent? Yes, yes. We want to open chapters in each state in the U.S., yes. Okay, so let me, I'm, in South, I'm in South Carolina. Let me send you my email address. Okay, thank you. Chapters at our ADDI.org. Good morning, everybody. My name is, uh, my name is Cass Dieu. I'm from Wisconsin. How are you guys Wisconsin? doing? <coughs> Wisconsin, yeah. please send me an email at chapters at our ADDI.org to open up a chapter there. Good morning. I'm Tabab Dalisa from Florida. Florida, we have a chapter. Thank you. Good morning. Gordon from Maryland. Maryland. Good morning. We have a chapter. <coughs> Hello, this is Annetta from California. You say California. you have a chat in Canada? Yes. Okay. Oh. Canada has a large, is a large continent. Uh, we could probably break it down into provinces. We already I'm have done that, sure We already done that. It's two screen, regions in Canada. But could you stop sharing okay. your screen, please? Do you have a chat in Michigan? Hello. Thank you. Um, uh, so what about the Spain? Because I live in Spain, Barcelona, Haiti. Uh, Spain, uh, send me an email to chapters at, uh, at ADDI.org, please. I don't think okay. we have one there. Oh. Yeah, chapter so in Michigan. If you go to our website, all our chapters are, are on there. If mm -hmm. you go to www.ouradi.org, you'll see all our U.S. and international chapters there. All right. So do you have one in Michigan? That's my question. Go on the website, like she said. Check check the website. If you don't see your, your chapter on the website, then just send me an email to chapters with an S at the end at, at our ADDI.org. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Do you have right. chapters in UK? Yes. Uh, go on the website. All of them are there. The, the chapters that exist are on the website, yes. Yeah. Okay. Olainka, is Ben on yet? Good afternoon from Ghana. Good afternoon. I'm Bendika Anita Mensa from Cape Town. Um. 
This is Christina and Daphne Spell with Dream Asian EFX Studios, Inc. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, hello, this is George. Good morning. Good morning, team. Good morning, everybody. This is Benson. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. I was lost. I could not find the link. <laughs> That's what happened to, to, us, to us. It's good afternoon. It's not morning yet. It's already four o'clock here. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? Where are you are? New York. Just maybe we can just say good day all. Good day. Where are you located? Hello. The last well, speaker. Greetings. After four o'clock. Where are greetings. you? World greetings. Yeah, what's good about morning? What's good about morning? Good Not afternoon. morning. Grand yeah. rise. Good rise up. Morning is beautiful. Wake up. Mm -hmm. Sister Amira. Greetings, greetings, Sister greetings Amira. everyone. This is Ayat from New York. Hello. 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 Amira. From California. Yeah. Mr. Amira. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> I think, I think, I think from California. Dr. Francis from California, San Diego. Are they still blocking people who turn off their video? I think well, so. well gre greetings from here, New Zealand. It's 3 a.m. here. Very oh, early wow. morning. Hey, yeah. Go back yeah. to bed. Go back to sleep. <laughs> 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 I did. Hi, Dedication, is, right? To be hi, up this at is Queen George from Chester in England. Just near Manchester. Hello, nice, hello. nice, nice, nice. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you all. Nice to Hello. 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 Oh my goodness. Uh, mute, 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 mute. Speaking, excuse me. Whoever is speaking, whoever just spoke, this is Speaker Robertson. Can you please to get out and come back? Your volume is bad. You are, have a very bad connection. So whoever was speaking just now, please exit and come on back in because we can't hear. And can you mute everybody for now for the purpose of uh, avoiding disturbance? I'll say my hello first. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, everybody from Virginia. Welcome, welcome. From Germany. Good evening, everybody. Why is everybody muted? Yes, I believe so, but then everyone also has the capacity to unmute themselves. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and remove the unmute yourself because come again. Be here. Everyone is muted. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. 
wherever you are in the world, with all protocols observed, Your Royal Highness. Uh, Her Excellency is running a little bit late. She's on a very important phone call right now. So we're going to go ahead and start without her by asking Amira to please jump in and give us a little spiel on our ADDI. Amira, please. Wonderful. Uh, So let me... um... come on camera so y'all can see me. While you're doing that, our theme for today is uh, to prepare for the expo in Ghana, uh, which is supposed to be August uh, 27th through the 4th of September. That will be of course in our beautiful, beautiful Cape Coast where our Wakanda city is going to be built. Amira, you ready? Yes, ma'am, give thanks. Go ahead. So uh, welcome everyone. I appreciate y'all being here today. Um, Your Majesty, thank you so much for your presence. Uh, We appreciate you. Uh, All protocols observed for everyone who is here. Give thanks. Uh, So welcome to another one of ADDI's webinars. Uh, This one again is on our trade expo. Uh, So this is going to be a pretty much part of our for-profit side of the house of ADDI. So if you're not familiar with ADDI, we have essentially two sides, right? Not-for-profit side and a for-profit side. Uh, The goal of the organization uh, in its entirety is to essentially raise the level of awareness of the African diaspora, of the uh, opportunities that are available in the continent, on the continent, right? Uh, Take advantage of the African continental free trade area, bringing that to your awareness as African diaspora, uh, understanding that we have uh, the rightful duty and the uh, an obligation uh, to build the Africa that we want. So through various for-profit and non-profit, uh, not-for-profit programs um, that we've established as an organization, we are working together uh, to build the Africa that we want. Um, so Again, one of the main things that uh, from a community outreach perspective that I always like to talk about is um, some of the nonprofit things that we have in place, like our women's empowerment program, um, our youth empowerment program. So we currently have uh, a cybersecurity uh, training uh, available for youth. Uh, We are working on a program for microloans for uh, women. Um, We have of course, our million dollar campaign. So we want uh, everyone to be a part of and participate in ADDI. So make sure that when you come to these webinars, you are not just coming by yourself. Invite 10 of your friends to join us here. Um, Because again, a million people, that's a lot of people, but it is only a very, very tiny fraction of the African diaspora. There are 423 million African diaspora. Uh, we are only looking for 1 million, right? 1 million, uh, so that we can be 1 million strong and come together uh, in front of those uh, at the heads of states to show that the African diaspora can unite, that we are united, uh, that we can unite to build the Africa that we want. Um, We all have our own superpowers, various skills and talents that we bring to the table. And collectively, we pack a more powerful punch. So uh, it is imperative that we take advantage of this opportunity that we have uh, with such wonderful leadership, um, a true visionary that we have in uh, Her Excellency, uh, Dr. Erika Nishihombari Kwao. Uh, we have the one of the most uh, phenomenal women in our midst to really guide us and lead us on this mission to bring African diaspora from all around the globe together uh, for one common goal. So it's super important that we do our part in bringing everyone uh, to the table um, because there there is a place for everyone um, at the table here at ADDI. Uh, I don't think Her Excellency is on yet. I I might as well just do my commercial. (laughs) So uh, first and foremost, get yourself some coffee. All right. So we were blessed to have um, Mama Mata coffee. This is Kenyan coffee. Okay. This is coffee straight from Africa. Um, And like Her Excellency says, if you haven't 
had coffee straight from Africa. You haven't had coffee. So we have 10,000 bags of coffee that we need to sell, which will get our organization $100,000. We have 10,000 bags. Up to this point, we've sold like, I, it's shameful, y'all. It's just shameful. We sold about 200 bags of coffee. So I appreciate it, but I think I'm the one who bought all 200 bags. Like, I need y'all to buy some coffee, <laughs> okay? I need y'all to buy some coffee. Um, we have 10,000 bags of coffee. $10 for every bag purchased uh, goes directly to ADDI to help fund, uh, like I said, our women's empowerment program, all of our nonprofit programs to support our operations um, for all of the things that we do that we bring to you um, all of these opportunities, we do need to finance them in some way, shape, or form. So again, we give thanks to Mama Mata for um, donating 10,000 bags to our organization, but it's up to us to sell them. So please, even if you don't drink coffee, buy some for a friend, buy some just on the strength, donate it to um, your local shelter, organization, do something, but just really support this effort. You know, it's a simple uh, bag of coffee, but it really can uh, speak volumes and go a long way uh, in what we do as an organization. And so next up, um, uh, we always have to talk about the foundation. Our organization's foundation rests in this, uh, I, I'd like to say this is like the handbook, the ADDI handbook, right? So this is Her Excellency's uh, first volume, uh, Africa 101, The Wake Up Call. And um, as you can see here, it says, wake up from your slumber of 400 years, free yourself from the mental shackles of slavery and colonization. So again, this speaks volumes to the mindset uh, that has been ingrained in each and every one of us uh, as it relates to uh, being descendants of formerly enslaved or colonized Africans. Um, throughout this book, Her Excellency brings to light a lot of the different um, historical facts, um, things that have happened and things that are, um, you know, the evils of colonization. This is kind of one of my, one of my uh, it's, I like to say it's one of my favorite chapters to read, um, but I love all of these uh, chapters here. You see, we have the Andrinka symbols um, really representing uh, Africa from a uh, from the Andrinka symbols at the end of each chapter we have so it's a very interactive book um, so at the end of each chapter we have a QR code that you can literally scan and look at the beautiful pictures right um, a QR code that you can scan at the end of the chapter which gives you a video of her excellency explaining the chapter so it's a very interactive book. Again, um, it is about the past, the present, and the future. It speaks to her time at the AU. Uh, it speaks to what's next as it relates to ADDI, right? Um, so we really want you all to uh, understand what the way forward is. Um, and a lot of that has to do with exactly what we're doing here at ADDI. So if you want the foundation, of what we're doing as an organization. This is essentially the handbook, the organizational handbook. So each and every one of you should have a copy of this. So you can go to ourafica101.org and get your copy. You are still in time to get one of the actual um, autographed copies. Uh, so order your autographed hardcover copy of Africa 101. Again, this gives you the found foundation. It really lays the blueprint of what this organization is about and what we're built on. Uh, so I'm going to pass it back to you, my beloved sister, Sylvia. Sylvia. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I will post um, some information in the chat as it relates to the link to buy the coffee, the link to buy the book, and some other various information as it relates to ADDI give thanks to all of you for being here. I appreciate you, my beloved brothers and sisters. Ashe. Thank you very much. My apologies, I should have introduced our uh, Mr. Mira Ansa, who is our Director for Community Affairs for ADDI. And of course, I neglected to introduce myself to you. I assumed everybody knew who we, are, who we were, so my apologies. Let me do this correctly. My name is Sylvia Litana Robertson. I'm the Director for Chapter Formation for ADDI. 
And like I said, Mr. Mira Ansa, the beautiful lady you just heard speaking, is our uh, director for community affairs. So with that being said, uh, since we're waiting on Her Excellency, uh, let me just Oh, she's in? All right. Yep. Thank you. For those of you who um, are not familiar with our ADDI yet, we do have chapters that we're opening all over the world, globally. They're just not in the United States, but all over. And uh, suffice to say, I'm so proud to announce that we have our first African office. It's not a chapter. The office, the offices in Africa are going to be offices, not chapters. So Cape Coast is housing our first ever African um, office. And uh, right now, our team from Cape Coast is on there, including His Royal Majesty, Na, uh, King Nona Abukese. So with that being said, I believe our Excellency is online. Your Excellency, are you on? Those of you who don't know whether you have chapters. He is joining in um, right now. Um, All right. Yeah. All right. To, to find out if there's a chapter in your location, please go to our website at www.our.our. ADDI.org and go under chapters, C-H-A-P-T-E-R-S. If you don't see your chapter, whether it's in your uh, uh, diaspora area where you live, right now, Africa, the only office open is Ghana and we are holding on to the African offices until Her Excellency tells us we're ready for Africa. But the rest of the world in the diaspora, we are opening up chapters. If you do not see your chapter, on our website, which is www.ouradidi.org, our ADDI.org, then go under chapters. Please send me an email to chapters with an S at our ADDI.org, chapters with an S at the symbol at our ADDI.org. And I'll be more than happy to work with you so that we can open a chapter in your region, in your area, or in your country. Your Excellency, are you on? I am trying to own on, but your, your vo the voice, you're so distant. I'm distant? Yes, I can hardly hear you. Really? Did you yeah. take off the, the Spanish translation yesterday, Your Excellency? Can you check that for yourself, please? At the bottom? Is that translation thing still on on yours? Let's see. Can you hear me now? Better? Um... Amira, can you guys hear me clearly, or is it just Her Excellency? I can hear yeah, you. I can hear you. Okay. Can everybody hear Her Excellency? I can hear her as well, very clear. Your, uh, Your Royal Highness, Nana Abakesi, can you hear me? Your Royal Highness? Oh, Lord, what are we going through today? Benedicta, are you on? Benedicta, because everything on my side is on. Hmm. Benedicta is on. She's on mute. Yeah, I hear everyone. Can you unmute yourself? Is on. Can I'm you unmute yourself, please? It looks like Her Excellency is logged off. <clears throat> okay. Benedicta. Mm -hmm. Can we just get um, yeah. I, I need somebody from uh, our team. Yeah. I need Somebody from our team in Ghana to say something and tell me if you can hear me or not. Can I take that a minute, please? Is Alma yeah. available? You may need to unmute us. Unmute us. We are muted. Oh, I see. But can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. great. All right. Thank you. Her Excellency has to log off, so she's coming back in because she said she couldn't hear me. So let's give her one second. We muted everybody because of the background feed. So um, we'll, we'll do the unmuting at the end of the, uh, 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 the presentation if we have time for Q&A. But for right now, because some people forget they mute themselves and then there's feedback coming in. So this is a very important sure. topic today that we're discussing and we don't want anybody to miss anything. So we'd rather there's some very uh, peace and quiet so that whatever's being said, all of us can grasp at the same time. So with all due respect, we're going to keep everybody muted and my sincere apologies if it's any convenience to any of you. Your Excellency, are you on? I do not see her. She's, she's on, she's unmuting right now. All right, thank okay. you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me to please introduce um, our 
mother of uh, the house, our mother, Mother Africa, who is our founder and president of our organization, ADDI, the African Diaspora Development Institute, which is headquartered in Washington, DC. Her Excellency, Dr. Arikana Chihomorikwao, as most of you know, is a medical doctor, but after her time with the African Union, she decided to bring the entire diaspora together, like you heard our community director uh, speak a little bit about it. So this is why we're here, because now we are opening up uh, going mm -hmm. to Africa. We have a trade expo that we are very, very excited to speak about today. And guess what? We have His Royal Majesty King Nana Abokesir as well online. So with all due respect, Your Excellency, Dr. Arikana Chihumbori Kwa. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. My apologies for being late. There was a call that came that I could not get off. I had to take the call. My sincere apologies for keeping you all waiting. My apologies, Your Majesty, for keeping you waiting as well. Uh, I, I simply could not get off uh, this particular call. Welcome, everyone. Today is a very important day. It is the culmination of what we have been trying to do as ADDI for the past 12 months. We are now looking at, we are now in a position that we can bring all of you together to begin the journey to the realization of the building of the city of return, the Wakanda One city of return in Cape Coast, Ghana. Cape Coast, Ghana, which is an appropriate place to start this conversation, because for those of you who are not in the know, the children of Africa who were taken out of Africa as slaves, 80% of them left Africa through Ghana. Those who were taken to North America, they left through the dungeons. They call them uh, uh, Cape Coast castles. We call them Cape Coast dungeons. They left through the port at Cape Coast. And those who were taken to the Caribbean and South America, they left through a port that's about 20 kilometers from Cape Coast called Elmina. Again, they call them Elmina castles. We call them Elmina dungeons. It is so fitting that the president of Ghana, President Anado, felt it necessary after declaring 2019 year of return, he declared 2020 beyond the return. And with that in mind, the president of Ghana reached out to the mayor of Cape Coast and the kingdom of Asebu and the other two kingdoms in the area and asked them to realize the construction of the city of return in Cape Coast. Why Cape Coast? Because that is the place that the majority of the ancestors last set foot on the African soil. It is fitting therefore that the descendants of the formerly enslaved must have a home in this region where they can stay, where they can stand on that soil and the dungeons, look across the Atlantic straight at the invaders straight, straight at the slavers and let them know that while you may have succeeded for over 400 years, when it's all said and done, the descendants of the formerly enslaved are the ultimate victors for they will have come back home to Africa. They will have come back home to that very same place their ancestors last set foot on the African soil. This is a pilgrimage, my brothers and sisters, a pilgrimage that we hope we will partake every year, where the children of Africa shall never again forget what was done to our ancestors. We'll never ever forget the carnage that took place in those dun dungeons. Before they came to the dungeons, while they were in the dungeons, the journey the rigorous conditions that they were put through across the Atlantic and the abuse continued on the slave plantations and the abuse continues on the streets of some cities in this country. Examples like George Floyd. Our journey is not, nothing like any other. Our going to Cape Coast is therefore very fitting and there's no better place and no better way to go home but to organize ourselves and be in a position to take back our inheritance, to take back that which belongs to us, 
to claim the driver's seat that we have forever given up. The seat that has our name. The seat that others have taken. Starting with the Europeans, they continue to occupy that seat. The Chinese have joined them. The Middle Easterners, the Indians, the Russians, the Japanese, everybody around the world is occupying the seat that must be occupied by the children of Africa. And that is you and I. We have given up that seat for far too long. ADDI through the leadership of Nana Obokase, the mayor of Cape Coast, the different kingdoms around the area. Of course, President Nanado, and for ADDI, through the leadership of our brother Benson and his entire team in the trade and investment division. We have put together an amazing event for you. A journey that's going to culminate in the children of Africa, creating those meaningful relationships, creating those meaningful collaborations, creating the unity of purpose. We are calling you to join us in going home to Cape Coast and launch the first ever Expo that's going to showcase to the world, that's going to showcase to our leaders in Africa how true collaborations can be done when the children of Africa who are of like minds come together and unite with our brothers and sisters on the continent. We are going to show the world that while they have tried for centuries to keep us apart, that game is over for we are going home and no one is going to continue to devise us anymore. No one is going to continue to tell us that Africa is a diseased and dying continent. Guess what? Africa is home. We are going to own it. The good, the bad and the ugly. That is our home. We are going to let people know. We are going to remind each other that you don't go to China and find black people driving the Chinese development agenda. You don't go to Europe and find black people driving the European development agenda. You don't go to India, you don't go anywhere on earth and find black people driving development agendas of other nations. We, as a uni united children of one mother Africa must not, should not, and by golly will not allow them to continue to occupy the driver's seat for Africa's development. We've been in the wilderness for far too long. We're educators, we're doctors, we're lawyers, we're accountants, we're engineers, we're taxi drivers, we're everything you can think of. We are the most adaptable people on earth. The most hardworking people, the most intelligent people I know. We can no longer continue to allow them to drive Africa's development agenda. The development of Africa is our responsibility and ours alone. Today, we're going to begin the conversation to take over that seat, to develop our Africa to let the world know that no more shall we be comfortable with, with being consumers of what they own. No more shall we be comfortable with being employees. We're going to own the brickyard for the bricks that we use to build our houses. We're going to own the textile mill that we make the fabrics that we use to sew the clothes that we wear. We're all, we're going to own the railway line. We will no longer be satisfied by being an engineer on this railway line. We will no longer be satisfied by being the conductor of this railway line. We, we will no longer be satisfied by having the ability to ride a train that we do not own. We shall own the airport. We shall own the airline. That is the right thing to do. That is the fair thing to do. That must be done. And if we don't do it for ourselves, don't be selfish, my brothers and sisters. We must do it for our children and generations to come. 
Really, there is no other option. It is just that simple. How long can we continue to be the most disrespected race? We, the mothers and fathers of humanity, as we know it, and I always pivot to the black woman, because ultimately you gave birth. Listen to everybody from Best Napoleon. Human being. So interesting, so touching for Africa. We are going to sit up. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not unmute yourself. The house rule was from the beginning. If you did not uh, hear the first information is, please, there will be no unmuting yourselves. Please all mute because if I mute you, you will not be able to unmute yourself. So please stay muted until you are asked to unmute if there will be a QA. and a I hear in the background somebody that's cackling. I can't see you right here because there's so many of us. Please mute yourselves. Amira, can you please mute all of us? Thank, Thank you. Your Excellency, please start. My apologies for that. So we're here today, my brothers and sisters, to showcase our beautiful city of Cape Coast. With us today, we have Nana Abokase, our very own majesty, who is responsible for our being in Cape Coast today. We are here today to see a showcase from the Chamber of Commerce in Cape Coast. They have streamlined some low hanging fruits for us to consider investing. We are here today, you shall hear from Professor Asamoa, who is a lawyer, an accountant, well versed in project development, he is going to be responsible for categorizing and creating the sponsorship packages, the investment packages for whatever entity, whatever project that you decide you want to get involved in. We have assembled a team for you, my brothers and sisters, that when you do go to Ghana, we are going to expose you to the various opportunities. As an individual, if you have $1,000, we're going to expose you to so many women with projects and ideas that if they can just get $1,000, they can grow this business into a multi-million dollar business. At a later date, I shall bring my own girlfriend who was a seamstress to give you just an example of what you can do with very little, what difference you can make. She borrowed $10,000 after sewing clothes for many years out of her bedroom with one young lady. Today, she employs close to 3,000 employees. Before COVID, for over 10 years, she was exporting two 40-foot containers of polo shirts to the United States. She carried Ghana's AGOA participation single-handedly. And during COVID, she was asked to begin manufacturing PPPs. And here we are, a woman who was a seamstress out of her own bedroom. Look what a difference $10,000 have made. Look how many lives she continues to impact to this very day. You can all Google her up. Her name is Selma, S-E-L-M-A, Salifu, S-A-L-I. F you, Google Selma Salifu Ghana. You will even see a video where the president of the World Bank, his story is such a remarkable one that he had to visit this plant. He couldn't believe a seamstress working out of her own bedroom could accomplish so much. I need you to go to Ghana with the right frame of mind. So if 10,000 in what you have, we are going to expose you to opportunities to become a partner. So we are talking of people who are not even registered, market women with ideas. And then we have the small ones who are registered, but they are struggling and they just need a couple of thousand dollars. And then we go on to the medium businesses and all the way to the big businesses. Guess what we are going to be doing, my brothers and sisters, during the expo, Professor Asamoah is going to have a desk with a team of people 
who are ready to register your company. You create those relationships, we will make it easy for you to do business in Ghana. We will register you. We are going to have, uh, we already have our own offices in Cape Coast, Ghana. We are going to have your back. You will no longer have to deal with the red tape that most diaspora struggle with because it is very unnecessary. The reason you are going through the red tapes is because we were not organized. ADDR is saying that is a thing of the past. Nana Obakase is saying that is a thing of the past. The, ki the kings in the kingdoms are saying that is a thing of the past. Children of Africa, come home. You will see what can be done when people who are ready, people who are ready to take care of business, people who are on the same page, people who are approaching this process with a selfless mind, people who are approaching this process saying, we are building a brick house on the hill. But while we may be in the foundation level, I am a roofer. I am a drywall person. I am in furniture manufacturing. I make refrigerators. But because we are not there yet, Ambassador, we are building, we are digging the foundation. What can I do? That is the spirit we are looking for. The spirit that says we now we are going to build the biggest mansion on the hill. And I just want to know, what can I do? I am not coming to this process asking questions. Why is that one not there? Why is that one not there? What are you doing about that? My position is, if you see a void with ADDI, I want you to come to ADDI and say, Ambassador, I can fill that gap. Because there are so many gaps to be filled. This house is nowhere near being complete. So yes, while you are a, a builder, a roofer, I might say, son, take a shovel, start shoving, take a pick, start digging, pick up that wheelbarrow, pull the concrete, and we'll get to the roof. When we get to the roof, you are in charge. When we get to the drywall, the drywall people are gonna be in charge. All the way along the process, the engineers are going to be in charge. The electrical engineers, the mechanical engineers, it's called coordination, my brother. So you see, you are coming to the table with the right frame of mind of building something. You, not somebody else. If you're coming to the table with mindset that says, oh, what have they done? Oh, we need money for this. Where do you think the money is coming from if you are not putting the money on the table? I see that all the time. Uh, who's going to fund us for this? No, you are going to fund us. We're going to fund ourselves. So rather than ask, who's going to fund us? I want you to say, Ambassador, I got 10 bucks. Where can I put my 10 bucks? Because I know a million of us with $10. That's $10 million right there. That's the mindset we want. Let me conclude by reminding you that in 1945, 13 Jewish men met in a library in Tel Aviv. Didn't even have an office. This was soon after Holocaust. The decisions they made that day are decisions that has led them to the Jewish nation and the Jewish diaspora that they have today. May I also remind you, while they have this little bitty desert called Israel, we have Africa, over 30 million square miles. While there are only 15 million Jews diaspora, Jewish diaspora, we have close to 400 million African diaspora. Now you do the comparisons. It's shameful, isn't it? To have such a wonderful, the most, the richest continent on earth, to have the largest numbers of the most intelligent, hardworking people, we can come together to save ourselves. That has got to change. Now I understand we were put to sleep 
I understand we were brainwashed, but we are the generation that's going to say insanity no more. We are the generation that's going to say we have lived in what Albert Einstein defined as insanity, doing the same things over and over and expecting a different result. We are the generation that's going to say no more, insanity no more. We are going to come up with a different strategy. We will con not continue to do the same things. We will not be going to those who put us in this position to ask for funding. Let's think outside the box. I'm calling on at least a million people by the end of the year to commit to $120 a year. That's $10 a month. That's $10 a month. We'll be sitting at $1.2 billion. Easy. That's what I'm talking about. Now let's do it to perpetuity. Now let's do 2 million people. Now let's do 5 million people tops. At any given time, if we can work towards 5 million diaspora who are committed to $10 a month. Some might have it this year. Some might not have it this year. Next year, some might have only $60. But if we just continue to say, this is for ADD, this is for our liberation, and we keep putting all that money into a diaspora fund, we're going to end up with a fund that's just as powerful and as big as the Jewish fund. The plan, while we may not accomplish it today, tomorrow, next year, but 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now, is to have as many ADDI centers as possible around the globe. Just like the Jews have the Jewish synagogues. If a Jewish man needs help, they go to the synagogue and they get it done. They get it done. They get the help they need. But we're going to have our own ADDI offices, but we're going to take care of ourselves. We're looking to having ADDI banks around the world where we will begin to empower ourselves, where we own the businesses in our communities, where we make sure that we get loans that are not going to be discredited because we have a bad credit, credit score. We're going to dismantle the system they have used to keep us from accessing wealth. And all of it is gonna start with us pulling our pennies together. It can be done to women, to take it home, look at your closet after this meeting. Look at all the clothes, the tags on, the shoes, the handbags. It's easy. It's all about the right frame of mind. This, this is why we're here today. So as we prepare to go to Cape Coast, I need you to start saving your pennies. Pay attention to the presentation of the projects that are going to be presented to you today. <clears throat> Pay attention to Professor Asamoah, and he will tell you what it is that he's prepared to do, that he's experienced to do, and that we are giving you the red carpet to get into Cape Coast, to get into Ghana, and overall, ultimately, to get into the continent with your back covered. So you never have to worry about who is going to take what from you, because you're part of the family, and we're going to cover each other. You're going to hear from um, our majesty. He is going to reiterate that committed to welcoming you home. Welcoming you home with a red carpet. That's what this conversation is about. Welcome all of you mm -hmm. to ADDI and welcome home to Ghana and welcome home to Africa. Thank you and back to you, sister. Sylvia. Thank you so very much, Excellency. As always, your speeches are very exhilarating. And uh, we'll move on now to asking His Royal Majesty, uh, uh, Royal Majesty Nana Abokase, who is our project coordinator as well for the, uh, the project in uh, uh, Cape Coast. Your Royal Highness, I hope I pronounced your name right. Can you unmute his highness, please? Yes.
Thank you so very much, Sister Amira. Sylvia. Plus, uh, <laughs> Sister Sylvia for unmuting me. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Your Excellency, our leader, Ambassador Chambare Kwao. Thank you, family. Thank you, all the wonderful people, the leaders, Amira, Olivier, uh, Brother Benson, all of you wonderful people. We appreciate you. We love you. Uh, this is very exciting for me personally and uh, for all the kings and the people of uh, Cape Coast and its environs. I bring you warm greetings from the king of Chufuhiman, the Chufuhiman traditional area, Otumfo Amwas Reku IV, who has uh, donated 30,000 acres of land for us to build the first uh, Wakanda world. Uh, uh, in a way, an answer to Disney World. And also from the King of Cape Coast, Asabaya Marquis II. And uh, from the King of Asebu, Okanaji Professor Memphis the Seventh. They are all very excited about this. And uh, they wish they are here, but they will join us next time. This morning, I had a singular honor of meeting with a select committee members from the Cape Coast uh, Metro Assembly. The agenda is something that will excite you guys. We are championing for ADDI to sponsor a bill to rename the streets of Cape Coast that are still colonial. It's a shame that after all these years, we have Governor Road Road. All the major streets of Cape Coast are named after the colonials. Mm. So this very morning, I met with the assembly members couple of them, we are starting this, and uh, this is the first meeting. Before Edidia comes to town in August, I personally want us to rename the streets of Cape Coast. We can have all the beautiful streets named after the colonials, the people who came to rape us. <laughs> so this is what happened this morning. I'm also very excited to add to what Her Excellency said. Professor, and as a Samoa is a very qualified investment analyst who has worked for all the big corporations in Ghana, for international corporations like KPMG. He has been the brain for uh, the number one private employer in Ghana, uh, Zoom Lion. He has worked for uh, the government of Congo, uh, the government of Liberia, Sierra Leone. He has an impeccable record when it comes to management. And this is a person we have retained as a project consultant for the Wakanda One, Wakanda One Project. There's a person who is going to put the numbers together to make sure that your investment is safe when you come to Cape Coast. We want to make sure that, as Her Excellency said, we don't want nobody's fingers bent. We don't want people to come and have bad experience. We want our brothers back home. Somebody will have to lead this process for us to be able to collaborate. When we are able to collaborate, when we are able to solve our own problems, we wouldn't need nobody. It's a shame for us to keep thinking that miraculously, the economies that have benefited from free labor for 270 years, and they still owe than any other economies. The economies that has benefited from labor, free labor from hundreds of years, and they still have poor people. If we say we're looking up to them, for example, we will fail, we will not succeed. So we can, just come together and collaborate. We have an impeccable leader. We have a wonderful leader, like our Excellency Ambassador Arikana, who wants to make sure that the diaspora and Africa join forces. This is how China developed. There are examples. This is the only way we can develop. Wakanda One is a solution. It will inspire us. It will be an example for the rest of Africa. That's future governments to learn from. So in this enterprise, in this setup, we have everything we need to succeed. And it's just exciting. The people of Cape Coast, on the streets of Cape Coast are very excited. Everybody is talking about Wakanda One. It is the next big thing to happen to Ghana. It is the next big thing to happen to us as a people of African descent. So I'm very happy. I bring to you warm greetings from Otunfo Amwa Sreku, the king of Chufuhiman, from 
or Saparema Kwesi Atta II, the king of Kepkos, from Okateti Professor Amenfi the seventh, the king of Asim, and from all the people of Kepkos, from the mayor of Kepkos, everyone is looking up to ADDI to bring the change that we all been craving for. Thank you very much for this wonderful platform. We believe that this is the beginning. We believe that things are about to change for us. We believe that if we keep believing and we keep trusting in our leader, the yes and two of our time, the word impossible will not be in our diction. We have everything we need to succeed. Let's rally around her excellence. Let's do this. We can do it. Let's begin by setting up the stage, the expo, the work on the one expo, but the Benson is doing an amazing job. Let's help him. Let's make sure, let's tell the story. I have here the general manager from Asasi Radio. Asasi Radio is a very powerful radio station. And people are saying it's for the president, but I know it's for the president's uh, cousin. They support us, they are with us. Nana, come here. I want him to say hello to you. He came all the way from Accra to meet me to discuss the project. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we are going to discuss Wakanda One Expo. We want this to work. We want the world to see what is about to happen to Ghana, what is about to happen to Kepos. We want everybody to know that we can solve our own problems. We want everyone to know that in our leader, Impossible is nothing. Thank you very much. Let's make this happen. Thank you, Mr. Sylvia. Thank you very much, Your Royal Highness. Uh, very well spoken, as always. You're very eloquent, uh, Your Majesty. And uh, at this point, I think I'm going to now call upon our director, uh, for, <coughs> excuse me, our director for trade and investment, Mr. Ben Kasui. <coughs> who is going to give us an overview of the agenda. And of course, uh, he will follow up with other people underneath him who are going to give us updates on our project in Cape Coast, Ghana. Benson? Thank you very much, um, Sylvia. I so much appreciate your support. Good day, everyone. Um, your Excellency, Your Majesty, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. My name is Benson Kasue, and I, I, I queue the trade and investment sector for ADDI. We are here today to get a sneak preview of ADDI Wakanda One Trade and Investment Expo scheduled for August 27th through September 24th, 2021, this year in the summer. The exploitation of our people can no longer be tolerated as Our Excellency had intimated. ADDI seeks to contain this exploitation. We are planning on a major trade expo in collaboration with the local leaders and business leaders, civil leaders, and the government of Ghana. Today, you will hear from our um, diaspora planning team as well as our local counterparts in Cape Coast. They really are the beef of this discussion because they are projects. That is a go through them. I invite you to find out how you can participate. And by that, I mean how you can actually take up some of these projects. Here's what happens. If you don't take over these projects, we at the diaspora should be willing to bring our companies and our network to invest in this project. If we don't do that, the obvious happens. You can see the Chinese, the Westerners and Easterners coming over to, to Ghana, taking over this project, and, you know, and then you know the rest of the story. Or people do not benefit as much. It is your house. If you want your house to be done properly, you're gonna participate in the construction of that house. And this is a part of that construction that we're embarking on. With that, few, those few remarks, I'm going to introduce to you a planning um, metrics person, Andrew Kasaja, who has laid out basically what should be happening or, 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 or the mouse we need to hit before we get there and uh, just share with you the metrics, what we're doing. Andrew? Thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, uh, letting me uh, actually address you, but more importantly than that, let me switch. Um, Amira, there's another system which has my video. So I'm going to go ahead and disable one audio. Should I share the screen? Go ahead. Okay.
Can you see my screen? Uh, we can see your name, yes, but not, you haven't put anything up yet. There yes. you go. We you can. Start your video. We got it. Very well then. Okay, so very quickly, and I really want to um, start off by really thanking uh, Your Majesty Nana Bakasti. I also want to be able to uh, congratulate Your Excellency Jambori Kwao because it's a really, really important event. At this juncture, what we're looking at is how do we collaborate? How do we pull together our resources? And I want to do two things. One of them is to understand and sort of explain unity of purpose. This is what uh, Ambassador mentioned. She mentioned two collaboration and she mentioned unite, okay? At the end of the day, we are in the driver's seat, okay? We are the ones who are gonna determine the success of this effort. As His Majesty mentioned, top reins exist on the ground. But as Her Escalizas has mentioned, top reins exist out here as well too, in the diaspora. Our objective is to make sure that as we unite and as we ex put together our resources, we're executing against a timeline that allows us to demonstrate capability, okay? Very simply put, what we're looking at is a very short period of time, okay? We're looking about 12 to 14 weeks. Given that time, we don't have the luxury of uh, and not only indecisiveness, but slippage. So the role that I take very seriously is going to revolve around ensuring that we actually execute on this. We demonstrate, as His Majesty has mentioned, the ability to deploy, show what we're capable of, but more importantly than that, demonstrate that Wakanda City and the objectives we've put in mind and the dreams and objectives that have been shared by our leadership can become a reality. I'm not gonna walk through this because this gives you a perspective on what's actually being managed within Benson's team. He's got a wonderful team of individuals who are committed to the objective. But this is also an indicator of where we need to be and what needs to happen. Key things I want to highlight are gonna be very important. The items are going to be things like, when we go ahead and make our commitments, we only have a few weeks to make commitments. We're also only gonna have a short period of time to identify sponsors, people who plan on attending, business partners we will be working with when we get to, to Cape Coast, but more important than that, people in the diaspora who want to make the commitment to participate and to be uh, contributors, okay? When you think about it and in a nutshell, and I'll summarize it this way, right? We know there's gonna be a time we're gonna need to make our booking travel arrangements. Look at the dates mid, early July and work backwards. If you need to save your resources, you know, say put your $100, $200 away every few weeks, you'll have the resources to travel, okay? One of the things we're gonna end to do and train to do is make sure we have a countdown table that is available for everybody to see. That countdown table is gonna have timelines that will address logistics on the ground, ability to get sponsorship, the website being live so a lot of these transactions can be carried out on the website. Uh, the integration that needs to happen in terms of our teams here and the teams that are working closely with His Majesty Nan Albuquerque. We need to make sure that both sets of teams are completely in sync. That is going to require collaboration. We're fortunate that we have other team members. We have team members in Kenya, East Africa, who are participating. I'll call out one of the people individually, uh, Alina Usangi, who's gonna be working closely with the team, ADDI team in Ghana. The objective is to ensure that we have continuity. Okay, in banking, that's a field I'm in. 
we have a concept called follow the sun. Follow the sun means if you're starting off in East Africa, which is basically seven hours ahead, that's when our day starts. Then Ghana comes online. Then US comes online. The ideal idea is to have somebody in another time zone, either West Coast US, or if there are members on this call, okay, who are in Asia, let's pull our hands together. Let's pull our resources together, okay? Although we have 12, 14 weeks, we can compress that time if, like Ambassador said, unity and purpose, true collaboration, unite. If we can run and operate as a follow the sun model, we can execute this and execute this well. So I thank you so much for this time. Appreciate the effort and really congratulations to all of you for joining, becoming part of this incredibly important mission as we buy back our futures, we buy back our lives. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Andrew. Um, sorry, Mayor, uh, sorry, I'm so good. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so I, met, I switched the order of uh, the agenda a little bit so that because uh, we wanna leave some really good amount of time for the Cape Coast team. Um, I'm gonna bring in uh, uh, the next planning team, uh, Michael Apia and Nana Adoja Emitsa. I didn't get pronounced the name properly, but these two are working on business incubation. And a part of our expo involves helping set up a business incubator in, in Ghana, in Cape Coast, and getting those, working directly with the Chamber of Commerce to get the, everybody involved, particularly small businesses who are trying to get starting to start up. So without further ado, Michael Apia. Michael, you may want to unmute. Michael, Michael, are you on? If not, we're gonna go to Nana. Can we unmute him, please? Uh, yes. Thank you. Not as Samoa, but Michael. Yes. Thank you. Here we go. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Benson. Uh, thank you, Excellency. Thank you, Your Majesty. And thank you, everyone. And my name is Michael. And please, can I, um, my projection, can it be shared for me? Yes, sir. Yeah, that would be the, yeah. the potential business incubation. Yes. 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 Okay. Give me one second. Yes. We'll have you going here. Michael is traveling, so this worked very well for him. Yeah. Okay. So as, as um, we are waiting for the presentation, um, the agenda of the business incubation is to facilitate the opportunities that um, we have in Cape Coast, Ghana. Yes. So um, the brain is ADDI idea to make sure that investors are protected and um, those who have business back home also will benefit from investors as well. So the business incubation is to, um, please, next slide, please. Uh, the business incubation um, is to help new and set up potential businesses to develop by providing services such as business management training, um, how to manage your business and how to be successful, and to launch profitable and sustainable entrepreneurial potential business. There's a lot of potential businesses in Cape Coast. And we have people who have money, as the SLC said, who are willing to invest. And as she gave the example of Madame Salam Salifu, that if we have thousands of people like her there, that if investors are willing to come, ADDI is, 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 is setting up the incubation to make sure that your investment is protected. And the businesses too, we, we try to manage them, make sure that they become successful. Next slide, please. So as we have, um, um, this is the whole idea of the incubation, innovation and entrepreneurship, network and collaboration, competitiveness, understanding the private public uh, partnership role. So a time will come that we can partner with the government to undertake any project in the country and buy in. Um, we can buy in the companies if you are an investor and you have money to buy in any 
business opportunity you find there, ADD will help you through our lawyer, Mr. Samoa, and make sure that all the paperwork, everything is in there. Um, we are here to make access to resources, the technology, outreach, monitoring, and evaluation. So this is some of the things that the incubation team under the business and invest, trade and investment will do, that we will monitor and evaluate that um, each partner, they being the investors and the business owners, are, are doing well and achieving what they want. And the next slide will let us show the type of business sectors that we have in Cape Coast or in Ghana. We have the agri, we have the construction, the general merchant, we have the textiles, we have the, uh, the electrical um, transportation, we have the non-profit organization for humanity um, services, we have the accounting auditing, we have the professional services like the lawyers, as the emergency said, we have the, the publishing, those who do books, a lot going on, next slide please. So these are some of the former sectors that have been registered under the Chamber of Commerce in Cape Coast. And we have over 1,000 informal companies. Some they have registered, but not under the Chamber of Commerce. Some too have not registered. So the idea of the incubation is to make sure that we, we put or we make available all these uh, potential businesses that um, the diaspora or we can go back to Ghana Cape Coast to invest and make sure that we profit out of it. So th this is the whole agenda. The next slide, please. The next one, please. Okay, thank you. The next one. So the AD ADDB Business Incubation Initiative is to structure and develop both the formal and the informal sector of business and help to the, help the informal sector to be formalized and to make the business attractive to that's where I, so make sure that the business is attractive as a business person you are going to invest, you will make profit out of it. And to mediate between the diaspora and the business in Cape Coast to protect the interest, that is the number one key because um, Her Excellency will not be happy that an investor has been defrauded or an investor um, investment has collapsed. So, this is the number one thing of the business incubation to protect the interest of the diaspora or the investors and to make sure that the business that you invest in are successful. Um, I think uh, we will thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Yeah. So um, as, as we said earlier on, the infrastructure support, we will, we will provide space, meeting rooms, et cetera, platform for networking, business assistance, professional advice, we have accountants, we have lawyers, we have marketers. So all this um, AD, ADDI have professional in, uh, um, that will help you when you go there to um, invest and we will support you in any way to make you successful so that you, you come, uh, we become an example in Cape Coast and it will spread to the other African countries. We thank you for coming. And this is the little presentation from the incubation sector. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Michael. Um, I think I'm gonna call Betia. Uh, Betia, as a bet, I can pronounce that Betia. So she will share a few remarks as, about the subject as well. So Amira, you can put our presentation up. And then mute her, she's, I think she's on. She's on. Is she unmuted? Marabati, are you on? Is she muted? I'm looking for her. One second. I'm looking for her. I don't see her. Uh, Amira, do you see Batia? Uh, look for Nana Amisa. No, Batia. Yes. But yeah, she goes by Nana Amisa. Oh, Nana. Okay, okay. Let me check Nana then. All right. I'm looking for Batia. Nana Ado Amisa. All right, there you go. All right, Miss Nana, you can speak. I've been here with you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. First, giving all honor and praise to our creator, um, Yah, Your Excellency. 
Dr. Ericana Chiambori Kwao, Your Royal Majesty, and all the honorable participants and guests, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is such an honor and pleasure to share the information, more information about the incubator. And if we go on to the next slide, uh, Michael has, has eloquently explained basically what we are. And I just want to add that we are a one-stop shop. This incubator is a one-stop shop for essential businesses to build a strong foundation as, and to build those rural dynasties that we once had, to rebuild them and to recreate them. Um, Selma and Salafu in Ghana is such an excellent example. And we want to give other companies the support. Continue on, please. Okay, this incubator, our incubator is going to provide or provides a warm and supportive business environment with many attributes. And here are some of the following. Again, we'll have the virtual office space and co-working space. Training will be available. Training from seasoned coaches, seasoned um, professionals, executives, retirees, um, coaching and consulting and mentoring in the many different areas that Michael explained. We will make sure that we guide that the correct certifications are needed, the licenses guiding the, um, the essential businesses with the licenses needed, keeping them updated, understanding your target market and your presentation skills, keeping them up to par amongst many. Funding, writing winning grants, not just a grant, but we wanna write winning grants that will help to catapult these businesses and successfully applying for the loans that they need. Okay, so we're creating programs to promote self-sustainability once the business um, once the business graduates from the incubator, we are encouraging the businesses to give back and to help sustain and to help other businesses coming and to be reciprocal. Partnering with Ghana Chamber of Commerce to register and support the small businesses and startups or the essential businesses in startups. The key to a key, another key is to focus on business development for both the new arrivals, the companies coming into Ghana, as well as the local entrepreneurs who want to be a part of this regeneration of the African genius in self help. So I want to thank everyone for their time. I really appreciate you. And I look forward to continue to building our world again, to building Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Batia. Uh, so much appreciate you and Michael's presentations. Now, when I get to the beef of this discussion today, uh, we're going to take some time to the Cape Coast team. Um, I have Benintita. Anita Mensa, Benedita is the Regional Executive Secretary of Cape Coast Regional Chamber of Commerce, prolific in French, so she's multilingual English, she's multilingual, uh, business development specialist and business analyst, project manager and consultant. She's also organized as a, uh, pro, uh, uh, as a dispute resolution advocate. So, um, and she will be joined by a co-partner, the chairman of the Regional Chamber of Commerce, um, Mr. Anthony Yofi Poko Atkins. I hope I did not butcher your name too much. So he is the president of the Council of Elders of Ghana, a trade union association, as a astute businessman and a business mentor and business advocate. He's a CEO and of a PKS Star Investments Limited, Cape Coast, leading wholesale supplier of hardware in central, in central and western parts of Ghana. So without further ado, I'd like to have some time for uh, Madam Benedita and Tamensa, I'm following which uh, is the chair will address us. Thank you very much, 
Mr. Benson. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, so Benedita, you need to uh, kind of step away from where the other phones are because yes, there's uh, interference. Amasada, Arikana, Chibo, Ri, Cloud. Distinguished personalities on this platform. Captains of industries and business mongols. You are welcome to keep close your home. It is a great opportunity to be given to the Kepos Regional Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And we are very proud of you. We are grateful to His Excellency for this vision and ADDI connection with the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. My mandate is to show you where the goal is to be able to turn it around to develop the metropolis. And for that matter, your hope. Before I go on to show you the goal, I would like my chairman for the Cape Coast Regional Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Antonio Pipoku Ekins, to give out his comments from the business community. Thank you. Thank you so much for this great opportunity. His Excellencies, Great Ambassador, Dr. Arikana Chihombori Kwao, founder and CEO of ADDI, Wakanda City of Return, and the entire leadership of that great institution. I stand by all protocols already established and wishing you a great afternoon over there and very good evening to our brothers here in Cape Coast and Ghana. I am Anthony of Kings, as you really mentioned, the Cape Coast Regional Chairman of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the only business organization in Ghana mandated by Legislative Instrument 611 to be the lead voice and the strongest advocacy group for the entire Ghanaian private sector. GNCCI, His Excellencies, is the only business organization mandated to issue certificate of origin to exporters in Ghana mm -hmm. under the African Continental Free Trade Agenda that just started in January 1st, 2021, just a few months ago. Excellencies, Cape Coast, the capital of the central region is the first capital of the Republic of Ghana. Then go. And the tourism had been Republic, the gateway to Africa. Cape Coast is the cradle of education in Ghana and harbors the leading university in this country in the area of education, teaching and research. It is important to note, His Excellencies, that over 400 years that our ancestors, our great, great, great grandmothers and fathers were forced out of Africa into the diaspora in chains through the doors of no return, never to return back to us We're having a bad connection. Mr. Anthony, uh, we can't hear you. Benedicta, we cannot hear you. Benedicta, can you uh, respond, please? You're unmuted. It looks like he lost volume. He's okay, what about the Benedicta? Uh, Benson, we proceed or what we do? Um, available, she can she can speak if uh, yeah, she can share the project. Okay, Benedicta, Benedicta. Take over. 
because she's not responding either. I'm looking at here. Yeah, I've asked her to unmute a couple of times. Okay. There, she's unmuted now. Yeah, we can hear you. Benedita is muted, so you may want to unmute her oh. so she can uh, do okay. a presentation. One second, we'll do that. Yeah. For your motherland and for your blood relations, Taku, we who do that behind as far by these colonial and imperial forces through chains, gripping, and through doors of no return. This great divine initiative by His Excellencies will position you to effectively render good stewardship and accountability. Your Almighty God, as to what you did. He's going in and out. Okay. Benedicta? Uh, can you please come on? Unmute okay. yourself and come yeah. on. We can't hear Mr. Anthony. He keeps going in and out. Do you have the same project you can continue, please? Hello, back home, please, please. Am I on? Yes, you are, yeah. sir. We can hear you now. You're going in and uh, out. Am I on? Yes, sir. Yes, back home, please. We've always been praying for you as blood relations and always thanking God for your lives. Excellencies, the regional chamber is happy today to be parted by the AGGI. And it's our hope that bridges are going to be built going forward to provide more fruitful relationship between our two sister organizations. Chamber of Commerce, LDCU, PHU, in our relationship to take advantage of the numerous rich potential resources in the central region. We lost him. Benedicta, he's gone again. Benedicta? Seems like when Benedicta goes out, he goes out too. The yeah, moment is in the same room. She just moved. Oh, okay. is calling for strategic partnership to help accelerate the latest industrial development for our mutual benefit. Chamber is saying. Long live the African diaspora. She keeps <sighs> moving, so we lose. Yes. I, I don't know if we need to move forward or. I think so. Uh, ben, can we move forward and see if they can uh, situate themselves? And then if we have to bring him back, we can bring him back. Yeah, I think we can. Uh, perhaps what we need to do is display the, uh, Amira, you have those projects. Maybe this is what we're talking about. Perhaps we can display them on the, on the chat and let's um, just look at them because that's what I really want them to go over the projects. That's the beef of the matter. Um, I don't know the depth of them, but what they have here is uh, projects that, they, that are vetted projects. They are in various categories. It's agribusiness, and it tells you what the project the city it is. Where we can do business. Because yes. looking through the metropolis, we have a lot of resources we can tap as one family and use it to improve the people of Cape Coast and improve the settings of the metropolis itself. I have categorized the project into the tourism industry. That is the potentials that we find in Cape Coast. Tourism, agriculture, education, health, ICT, renewable energy, and 
technological parks. I have investment areas and specific projects. Estimated total cost of the project and the location they can be found. We have the first on the list as the agriculture. We have a greenhouse development and operation. Can you come down for the first one, 1.1, 1 .1, yeah. The piggy pig farming as the total cost of 350,000 US dollars. And the area of investment is Jokwa in them. We also have a greenhouse development and operation, which is also costing 17 million, 951,000 and 34, U.S. dollars. Pitubio near Cape Coast. We also have vegetable and tomatoes processing, which costs two million seven hundred and fifty-eight thousand six hundred and twenty-one at Asebu. We also have agriculture, community fish farming, and fish feed manufacturing industry, which has an estimated total investment cost of 3,000 US dollars at Aseaso to Foyeman, Lower Dentra District, which is also closer to Cape Coast. We also have integrated community poultry, which also has an estimated cost of 10,000 million US dollars in Cape Coast. We also have rice value chain, which also cost 7 million US dollars at Asin Prussia in, in, in one of the districts closer to Cape Coast. We also have oil farm value chain, which cost two million seven hundred and fifty eight thousand six hundred and twenty one US dollars. Also at Himan Lower Dentra District of the Central Region near Cape Coast. We also have food processing which cost three thousand US dollars at Gomwa Omaze we also have food distribution center, which also costs five fifty one million seven hundred and twenty four thousand one hundred and thirty eight US dollars in Cape Coast. We have pig farming, meat processing, also at an estimated cost of three. 144,827 US dollars at Akete Chua, Cape Coast. Cassava processing costing 1,896,552 at Giaco Alalmina, Elmina, just close to Cape Coast. Then we have smallholder cooperative oil palm fruit processing, and we have 65,652 US dollars at Chifo in Tafrawaso, if you are being also to close to Cape Coast. We also have community vegetable chili pepper production, which also will cost. 59,545.59 US dollars at Mempiasam 
Eko Mampong, Asmaze, and Efutu in the Cape Coast metropolis. We also have a sustainable city development. And that we're looking for acquisition of land for Bamboo Eco City. And that costs us four million three hundred three three hundred thousand three hundred and forty-five US dollars at Kitipu near Cape Coast. We have bamboo processing factory itself as one million and thirty-four thousand four hundred and eighty-three US dollars at Pitibu also near Cape Coast. We have lime factory, stone quarry, and mining, which also costs fifty-one million seven hundred and twenty-four thousand. 138 US dollars. And the area of investment is Obek Kubla near Oforibia in the Eastern region. We also have some in the KE district near Cape Coast. Pigma clay, which is also found in Nanes um, district in Cape Coast, also near Cape Coast, Ayaldo. And uh, the investment cost is 100 million US dollars. 100 million US dollars. We have processing of byproducts that can be lime, orange, uh, sawdust, and then biogas. We have 60 million US dollars also in Cape Coast. We also have infrastructure development where we can invest in block making, pavement, breakers, and concrete manufacturing, which has uh, an estimate of 12 million six sixty eight nine hundred and sixty six US dollars, PTBU near Cape Coast. The next slide, please. We also have construction of residential, commercial, light industries, and tourism facilities. And we also looking for investment um, estimated cost of three. 34 million four hundred and eighty two thousand seven hundred and fifty nine US dollars. Also at Fitibu near Cape Coast, we also have tourism. Where we have specific, we want to, we want you to invest in specific art and craft gallery, and we also are expecting. Or the visibility study shows that four million US dollars can make it. It's found at Cape Coast. We also have ecotourism at a cost of 862,069 US dollars at a Guapo Comenda Edna Abren district near Cape Coast. That is in Elmina. Then we also have capacity buildings for development. Those who are interested in education, building the capacity of entrepreneurs. We have innovative hub training facility. And that costs 10 million US dollars at PTBU near Cape Coast. We also have ICT technology invention, also costing 30 million US dollars, also in Cape Coast. Manufacturing and distribution of detergents, we expecting 4 million 300 and 301. 
1,345 US dollars. And it could be found at Apio Sika, you know, at the university premises of Cape Coast. We are also looking at palm oil and soap making industry, which also cost 344,828 US dollars, also at Yami in the uh, district closer to Cape Coast. We also have processing machine and manufacturing of industry. And we're looking at uh, 1 million US dollars in Cape Coast. Manufacturing of mineral water. That one uh, is already existing, one which has started business already, and it needs a partner. And we are looking at 258,621 US dollars. It's just in Jopa, Heman, Lower Dentra, near Cape Coast. Community afforestation project, manufacturing, uh, um, sorry, we are also looking at US dollars, 172,000. 414 is also to be found at Paboso Ango Prom, also in Cape Coast. We are looking at Art and Crafts Production Center, and it's also person for million Nine hundred and thirty-one US dollars at SG, just in Cape Coast here. Mining, that is salt mining. We are looking at Benedetta. Yeah, yeah, we can't hear you. Is Benedicta on or she's uh she's she's bumped bumped out? She was on. I just saw her. Hold she's on, let me on. her mic is hot. I, I don't know why we don't hear her. Yeah, I see that too. Benedicta, uh, we can't hear you. Well, she's getting ready. Uh the um the this this project have a lot of uh, information. Perhaps we need to get more information on them. Uh, hopefully, Professor Asamoa will clean it up and give it more depth, um, this high level of the how this project look like. Uh, intentions are that uh, so we're uses... looking forward to welcome our prospective project uh, in in uh, industry uh, captains of industry to take up this ones to develop the metropolis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Benedicta. We appreciate your presentation. Uh, well received. Um, I hope um, we, we, we will be engaging you to get more details about this project. Um, Professor Samoa, uh, if you're around, we'd like to take some time, some, turn some time to you to kind of tell us how these projects align with what you're doing and how the ASRA can, can harness potential within these projects. Professor, you can uh, go ahead and mute Professor Samoa. Yes, he's unmuted. Okay. Thank you very much, YST and SNC. Yes, some of these pro projects, especially those around Cape Coast, what we are looking at, we've selected four projects now, and we will pick one or two from it after doing a bit of a analysis on the investment prospects. So those, uh, we do a further work on it and add one or two to what we already have. I'm going to share your presentation in a mere moment. Okay.
for those who are wondering about this presentation, we'll have them available in our depository and uh, we'll figure out to share them with the team, with those who have registered. There you go. For some reason they came in all upside down. I had to flip them all around, <laughs> but I think we're good now. <laughs> Never fail. Uh, okay, good. Good afternoon from Ghana. Excellency, Royal Majesty, Nana Obokesi. Um, good afternoon, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Uh, special good afternoon to my brother Olivier, who first introduced me to ADDI. Uh, because of time, I will give a high level then this presentation will be available either by mail or on the ADDR website. There are two presentations, one bigger on investment opportunities in Ghana, and this is zeroing in on ADDI's investment portfolio selected for Kanawa in Cape Coast. So please, can you go to the next, please? Yes. This, excuse me, the, 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 the one before this, Yes. This slide, excuse me. Ne next one, please. Are we good here or it says the next slide, please? And as the next slide is up. Is he on mute? I, we lost him. I think we lost him. Hold on, let me double check on him. One second. If he muted himself accidentally. One second. <clears throat> oh yeah, Ernest, okay. can you unmute? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. All Hello. Right. So, yes, yeah. I can hear you okay. now. Okay, thank you very much sir, for that. Yeah, this night I will put the idea project in the five perspective: an area of education, an area of hospitality, manufacturing, what kind of situation is the big project and the infrastructure. So please go to this slide. So based on this slide, the project and education is the Tenka University Base, five hundred teaching hospital, primary and other school, and then five star hotel and Wakanda resorts under the hospitality. We have the pharmaceutical plants among others. Can you move to the next slide, please? Okay. So those are basically the other, com these are commercial projects. The projects, this project, this is the model. ADDI will do a, J a joint venture, either in the form of build, operate, and transfer, or based on probably PPP arrangements. So the first one is the host hostel for Cape Coast Technical University and a shopping mall. This, the land is available, is started at some point and the university, Tenka University wants ADDI to come in. The second one is the Cape Coast, University of Cape Coast Hostel. We are looking at a, a hostel with a capacity of 10,000 and I will give details of this in the next slide. So based on that, the key projects are the Cape Coast University Hostel, the hostel for the um, shopping mall for Cape Coast Technical University, then the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital Surgical Center, and of course, the Wakanda One of the Pesce University. So, the four projects that we are focusing on the next slide. So, let me just see. 
Let's go to the following. Next slide. Okay. So, coastal facilities and shopping for for University of Cape Coast and Cape Coast and Cape University. Cape Coast and Cape University have over 4,000 students, of which only 300 are housed who have a hostel facility. Most of the students, which is up more than 3,007, live outside the campus and they live in different homes, sometimes makeshift houses, among others. So the need for a hostel for the Cape Coast and Cape University is actually paramount. The university have land which they have given. So the investment approach is that we sign a JV with them, joint venture with them, how to build uh, based on that, do build, operate, and transfer. The average period we are looking at is between 25 to 30 years. And the bit of high level investment analysis to say, is it a viable project to go in? Is it a project that solve a need? Is it a project that me actually support that? So the, and the also, it also comes with a shopping mall and other commercial centers of the same place. Please can, can you move to, so this facility is supposed to provide 1,000 hostel among other facilities. The investment opportunity is that because 4,000 students, only 300 have hostel on campus, it presents a unique investment opportunity. This same opportunity is also in the University of Cape Coast. Have over 10,000 students of which less than 25% have hostel on campus. So the University of Cape Coast, in addition to Cape Coast Technical University, will provide the land, ADDI, uh, or investors build on it and manage it. You manage your own cash flow because once it is provided, the commercial facilities, in addition to the hostel, you take care, we take care of the revenue and we take care of the cash flow. Please, the next slide. So basically, that is uh, the Cape Coast Technical University Hostel and University of Cape Coast Hostel. In terms of what is the way and what is the process, because we have a lot of projects and we want to move one step at a time. The intent is by June, the joint venture or the BOT agreement will have been signed. Then we complete the bill of quantities and the concept which has already been developed by the need, this need for some amendment. We intend that the investment memo to get to prospective investors and ADDI should be ready with, by July. Then we set off and if everything goes on, by October, November, we have to take off. Let me indicate that investment of Cape Coast is, and in Cape Coast and Cape University are open, also looking at other alternatives. So for us to take up this investment opportunity, we must decide as quickly as possible. Over 20,000 students need this hostel and they pay upfront. Immediately they pay before they get to campus. So it's a huge investment opportunity. People are converting small houses, and, but it doesn't meet the minimum standards of the investing. So this is an investment opportunity which taking advantage of. The second one, which is the Wakandawan Obukese Investor of Excellence. Actually, everything investment memorandum analysis to assess the viability of the investing have been done. The Wakanda One Centers of Excellence, we are supposed to establish a technical university or a technical university college. And this is the one, the Obukese, Wakanda One Obukese University. The object per the Wakanda One concept is to have agricultural farms, innovation center, data center, and a business incubation hub. All these four can be housed in the Obukese Wakanda One Obukese University because the university already have 106 acres of land ready. And all the analysis, the investment, the registration, everything has been done. 
So this provides opportunity to provide high class, high level technical education that focuses on four main areas. That is technical, vocational, science and technology using competency-based approach. So that students who go through this process are trained on competence, able to deliver practical solutions based on agricultural technology, vocational science and technology. Please, can you move to the next slide? So this makes the fourth one. Okay, so as I indicated, viability analysis have been undertaken. The university has been registered, boards already in place, the business investment memo ready. The focus of the university is to train talent and make sure that character formation students get industrial as well as other practical training in the area of STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and also TV, that is technology, vocational, engineering, and the aspects. When, excuse me, the next slide. So 106.9 acres of land is available, valued at 0.75 million US dollars. It's already registered. This university in terms of viability is projected to have a revenue over the, la the next 10 years of 106 million US dollars. Board is already there made up of the ADDI members and Wakanda members. Based on this, we intend raising shares, purposely for this project. So the minimum shares Actually, the shares available is 500,000 shares. So you don't need to buy other 500,000. What you need is just to get a minimum of 100 shares at $300. And the shares is open, is on, actually on sale. One share is $3 per share. So 100 is $300. And as I said, it has actually started and it ends on 30th of September. This is part of the Wakanda project anyway. Please, the next slide. So those who buy shares will actually be a shareholders after the law. They are required to have a voting right to decide on their next directors. And of course, they will be issued with share certificates. Of course, you will be given the audited account based on the loss of Ghana. And of course, you are entitled to dividend on this investment. Although it's a social enterprise or social business, there is actually registered as a limited liability and is part of Wakanda One project. The next slide, please. Okay, this is a further opportunity but please can you move on to the next slide because I want to do within five ten. Okay. So this will be the uses of the fund. Is land is available, 106 acres. Is, so the initial capital that will be raised it will start the academic block and the multi-purpose block. You want to be an IT-based university so that people from different parts of the world can study from here. It's Afrocentric getting into Africa the issues and make sure that the networking and the basic permits and all those things are acquired. There are four steps for you to get this, a very simple step. First one is get the application. The application is ready. You can assess it on their website. The second step, complete the application. You can pay, which is a minimum of 300 shares, the 100 shares are $300 at this account at Zenith Bank in the name of Wakanda or Bukesi University. The share certificate will be emailed to you or when you come in August or September, you can pick a hard copy if you wish. And once you do that, you are registered on the shareholders of Wakanda One or Bukesi University and you become a shareholder. Please, can you move on to the next slide? 
Okay, so this is a sample of the share certificate. So once by become a shareholder. So to sum up, the Wakanda One project, the four key projects are the Wakanda One of Bokesi University of Excellence, to the Cape Coast Technical University Hostel, initial capacity of 1,000 students, although they have 4,000 students, 3,007 do not have hostel on campus. It comes with a shopping mall, a commercial center, and some offices there. That's the second project. The third priority project is University of Cape Coast Hostel. They expect about 10,000 capacity hostel. And as I indicated in the need for the investment, University of Cape Coast has over 30,000 students, out of which less than 25% are on campus having hostel. So that's the third project. The fourth project is the Sergi Center, which is for University of Cape Coast Teaching Hospital. So you realize that the four projects, three of them are concentrated on education and the fourth one is on health. We will raise with the Chamber of Commerce and Industry to get at least one or two, probably from other sectors to add on. So in terms of priority of project for one, once we move on with the city, these are the ones that are really available the investment memos have been done, especially the work under one of Okesi University, and the others will also be done on same. So thank you very much. This will be available on the site and available to share for others. And the other presentation investment opportunities in Ghana will also be available. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, very much appreciated uh, your presentation, uh, Samoa. Um, we, I'd like to take some time over for um, just Q&A. And uh, as I know I've seen some of the chat um, questions you have, but if you need to reach out to us, um, I, my, uh, my email will be shared by Sylvia to everybody as my phone number as well. So if you can go share my phone number, my email, you can reach out to me so that we can set the dialogue. But the Cape Coast folks... Those are gonna are the people on the ground. They have way more information than I do, but with respect to planning the project, the expo, I'm very very involved. And so, projects wise, we will defer to them, but we involved with them. We need you to register the, for this expo. Um, that is how we're gonna try to make things work. Um, but I have some questions that have come through. But I also, as some way, if you don't mind, did you is the is the is the university? Um, going to be a private enterprise or it's a, it's a public? The university is a, but it's part of the Wakanda One project uh, per the last, at the last week uh, resolution. So it's going to be a private. Okay, okay. That, might, I, might, might I suggest because of time, let's go through the rest of the program, then we we'll do Q&A at the end for everything at one time. Very good. Uh, so with that we don't have to... people dropping off. Yeah, okay. Well, I want to get just a few highlights. We have a flyer coming out that was ready for the expo. That will be posted on our website and we'll start sharing it. We are also going to have our landing page by next week where you can go and register for the event. And in there, you have a registration fee cost. You have sponsorship um, uh, packages that you can partake of. Uh, we have already contacted Bridget. The logistics uh, on the ground are good. She's working on that. She has her own team. And we'll be, we're going to be involved with that as well. Um, so really, that's all what I need to share with the team. First of all, let me thank everybody for, for attending and for being uh, so patient with us. We, these projects are critical. We need them to be cleaned up a little bit more to make more sense. And we want to probably see the visibility studies that have been done so we can uh, at least assess participation. There are some of the projects that are of interest to me there personally. I like to participate in them, and I hope you found some night of that that might be of interest to you as well. Uh, but with that, I want to turn just a few minutes for Q and A and A for those who may have major major questions pertaining to the project and the expo. So see if you can control that discussion.
Yeah. Yes, please, uh, on uh, your right-hand screen, you can uh, lift, uh, put up your uh, hand or, you know, it's a little figure that looks like my hand. If you can click on that, please, I'll be able to see who has lifted your, um, your hand up. So please go ahead. And in the meantime, while we're getting folks to raise their hand, we do have a pre-registration landing page that's available. So if you go to wakanda.ouradi.org, you'll be able to pre-register for the expo. And then you'll be first in line to get information when tickets and all of that comes out. So feel free to pre-register at wakanda.ouradi.org. I've also posted it in the chat. Give thanks. Thank you so much. And with what Ben said, uh, if you want to get a hold of Ben yourself, please write to investments with an S at the end at our ADDI.org. Investments with an S at our ADDI.org. If you can't remember that, just send me an email to info, I-N-F-O at our ADDI.org, info at our ADDI.org. And with that being said, let me take our first question. Uh, we have one, two, three, four hands up so far. So I'll go in this order, Darnell, Eric, Wongani, Isaac, and that's it. All right. So Darnell, please. Darnell Clayton, I think that's your last name. Can you unmute yourself, please? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me unmute you for one second. One second. All right. Go ahead, please. Unmute. Darnell? I mean, oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So um, this is great. Um, I was wondering if there's like a risk uh, disclosure form, like a statement um, for investments. Cause I know in the U S like um, I dabble investments before they usually have to provide one. Otherwise the U S government gets kind of angry and kind of shuts everything down. So is there one that can be provided to us? Cause I don't want like a uh, U.S. government kind of just kind of blocking this at the last moment, um, accusing everything of fraud and everything. So that's just my question. Your Excellency? Maybe let's take, let's take four questions, then she can answer all them for once. Okay. Well, she normally takes two at a time. All right. Yeah, let's take let's, <laughs> All right. Let's take uh, Eric Ngabonza. I think that's how you pronounce it. All right. Yes, can you hear yes. Me, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Professor, uh, someone said the, the form can be found on the website. Uh, can you tell us exactly where that form, or that form is located on the website? I'm talking about the uh, Bokese uh, University for the investment. Mm -hmm. Probably hasn't been uploaded yet. It will be uploaded after this. Uh, we had to share the information with you first today. And then okay. after this is done, then everything will be uploaded so that whatever you're looking for, you know, because had it been up there, you'd have been asking what that was. So since the session is going to be up, uh, done today, I'm sure by the end of the day, our um, uh, people on the website will be able to update and put all this information that uh, we learned off today. Okay, thank you. All right. So I'll move to Phyllis. Hold on, Phyllis. Let's see if I can unmute you. Phyllis. Phyllis. Powers, yes. Okay, Ms. Phyllis, please unmute. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. Nice to see everybody again. Uh, this was a lot of information for me. And uh, considering the timetable, uh, would we be committed to having some additional meetings to just get more of a feel for really the nuts and bolts of the various projects discussed today? Um, that would be very important to me because I run a very busy schedule. There's already a lot of information and we're, we're being directed to go to the website to get information. And I, I think maybe I share with you of a lot of people, it's much more interactive. We can get a lot more accomplished in terms of figuring out what's actually going on, what the immediate needs are. Um, especially, I believe his name was uh, Andrew Kastija mentioned, I hope I got that correct. He's early about the time frame that he had to meet the uh, protocol for the Ghana Expo. I would definitely be interested in that. I'm a lawyer, but I have a very strong background in business and setting up different you know, companies and helping clients get their businesses launched from the ground to uh, launching. And uh, I, I'm definitely interested in the trade, but as I was listening to the discussion today, 
I didn't get the details that I felt I needed to understand what these investments were about, where the money would be going, how would I transfer that money into the person who needs it. Those kind of details, I think, are crucial, at least for me, uh, to be able to make good decisions. So that would just be some feedback that I have, but also a request for a follow-up with additional meetings along the way. So, you know, because this is like really the heart, you know, the meat and potatoes of, you know, ADDI, which is to not only unify us, but to, you know, show a commitment of loyalty to ADDI by meeting, especially around these trade issues, because it's really money that's going to make us grow and understand where we're growing and link our businesses to ADDI. I'm also getting a sense that people show up and they're making a presentation about their various businesses, but they're not really linking it up to ADDI, which, is, which has to be the helm as we come to this platform every month or every week with a view to grow ADDI and we're doing it for ADDI. So I know I said a lot, but essentially I'm asking for some, some meetings to help you know, explain the details about these investment opportunities. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Unmute her. Oh, <laughs> one second. She is unmuted. Your Excellency. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, Sister uh, Phyllis Powers, you're, you're right on point. I think may I suggest that you join uh, Professor Asamoah, who is the lawyer uh, who is responsible for all the registrations in Ghana, who is responsible for setting up the investment portfolios. I think you will be a great addition to the team so the two of you can work together in perfecting the process. Are you in a position to do that, my sister? As Professor, uh, Sister Phyllis Powers. She's a mute. Is oh. she, well, could her. you please yeah, unmute yeah. her? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll make a point to personally send in a message to uh, Mr. Asama today. Before we absolutely, because I think you two would make a very good team that can really help us package all this uh, in a way that uh, everything is laid out. Our finance team is actually in the process of creating relationships with Zenith Bank. Uh, that's most likely where the money is going to go. But I think you will be a great addition to Professor Asamoah to really streamline the process uh, before any funds begin to be sent out. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And also, for those who are asking about the program, uh, if you are a paid member of ADDI, these recordings are always available after the event. So if you are a paid member at the 365 level, uh, you will have access to the entire presentation. Um, also, the uh, trade and investment team is going to come back and sit down, and I'm hoping, Professor, uh, uh, Sister Phyllis, you will also be part of the team that can begin to then say, they've showed us a lot. There's a lot more, my brothers and sisters, a lot more projects. The, this is just a very small tip of the iceberg. We can start with this. Let's begin to streamline them. What we would hope is that go to the website, look at the list of the projects, which of course, only if you're a paid member, you'll have access to that. We want you to, to send an email to investments and say what project you'd like to be interested in. We should take maybe the top five and create in investment portfolios for those top five. The university is a given. Just so you know how we are moving, there's gonna be another offering for healthcare as well. We have the university because we are saying we want to own everything that we do. University has started. I think that's a good one to perfect the process and show how this can be done. And then after that, it's really just the duplication of everything. We're going to be investing in a hotel. Phase one of Wakanda is gonna be a resort, which will have a hotel and chalets. And of course, there will be a thousand residential communities. That's another offering. 
there are going to be offerings for the business district, the construction of the business district. So there are many other offerings that are coming. So I think having people with expertise, like you have Sister Phyllis, joining Professor Asamoah, that's what ADDI is about. Remember what I say, when you come to the table, even though you are a roofer, we are still in the foundation, what can I do? And that's really what we're doing. So we thank you. Precisely, this is the spirit we are looking for. So if you are on the, on the platform, you are listening, you think there is a place that a void that you can fill in putting all this together, we really appreciate you joining the team. The treasure investment team is going to need all kinds of help. The finance team, in terms of putting together the investment packages, they're going to need all kinds of help. So yes, we have one who stood up who's going to join Professor Asamoah, and I know I can speak on his behalf. He's very grateful uh, to have you join the team. And also, when, as we begin to mobilize, because remember, any business that's going to be registered in Ghana, they need to be registered here as well. So you can make sure that any business that's going to Ghana, you make sure that they are in sync with what is going to be done in Ghana. We could even have you now become the focal point for all the businesses to send their information to say, I'm interested in going to Ghana. So by the time we go to Ghana, you have all the American information. So when we go to Ghana, it's like boom, 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 get them registered, done because you already would have packaged them and Professor Asamoah would know what to expect. He will have all the necessary information. We're going to make this whole process move a lot smoother. So uh, I, I'm really grateful for you standing up and taking that role, much appreciated. Yeah, there, there, was, there was a son who asked a question earlier. I forgot his question. That was the very first question. Can you please repeat it, son? It was disclosure forms. Disclosure forms. Yes. Again, this is all going to end up being part of the packaging that's going to come out from the lawyers. Remember, this is the beginning of the process. So all that is going to be done when you get your, pa your investment package. This was just an introduction of what is to come. Like I said, there will be more portfolios, more offerings for various sections of Wakanda as we begin, to, uh, as we begin the ground digging. So our legal team, we also have uh, um, attorney Nanakwa. Uh, he is a retired uh, African-American lawyer from Ohio. He now lives in, um, in Accra, I mean, in, in Cape Coast in, in particular. Uh, so Sister Phyllis, he's gonna be also a team member that, uh, that you all are going to work together uh, to make sure that all these loose ends uh, are addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Our next question is going to come from Ms. Joy Zenz. Please unmute yourself. Yes, hello. My name is Joy Zenz, one of the diaspora here in Germany. And um, my question is more in regard of uh, the, the exhibition. So we have a platform of African women in trade uh, who have started trading among each other on our platform, like supporting from the diaspora here in Europe. I was, there are two questions. One of them, how can we partner with you in the exhibition? And um, the other question is, is the exhibition only for the Ghana community uh, also open for other African countries? That's it, that's all the two questions. Thank you very much. Next question I will take from Mr. Raymond. Raymond, please unmute. Raymond? Okay, doing so, can you hear me? Yes, I can, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate um, Dr. Arikana and uh, her, 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 her Majesty, um, and also um, all the members who have been actively involved. I've been watching and investing um, from afar. I'm in the US diaspora and um, wanted to know in terms of coming to the diaspora, to the expo, excuse me, um, whether or not our regional um, leadership, uh, I understand initially we're broken down into regions throughout the different locations in the diaspora in the U.S. broken down in regions. Is that possible that that regional individual um, can actually be a focal point for 
people getting ready to come to and moving through the process of the dice for or, or getting to the um, expo rather so that they'll have someone to feedback and get information to them if there's some some breakdown in communications in any kind of way um, and, and so that's one question the second question is um, the the concept of of, of Wakanda uh, and the um, city of return uh, with respect to um, uh, the conversation I've been having with development interests. I'm a city and regional planner. So I've been talking to engineers and architects you know, who are interested in this project and uh, some who are very well to do. And then they're looking at it from the standpoint of how they can be actively involved in the developmental process. And I understand, I know that we have um, specific kinds of groups like the, the, the engineering group, uh, and the legal group and the like, and people are interfacing. Um, but they're trying to figure out essentially if it's good to organize essentially on a local or regional basis here and then feed into the uh, established organization um, in that way. And so, but I'm, I'm talking to them and then individually, they're kind of looking at this and trying to decide on how they want to move. I'm thinking it might be better to have some type of regional structure once again where people can actually feed back and understand the issues which they understand i mean these are development people who are already in their own businesses and are doing quite well in america building all kinds of development and so i've been speaking to them and they're interested in this but it seems like when i talk to them there are different areas of, of because they're busy so there are different stages of looking at how we should come together. I'm thinking it might be better if we coordinate through a regional um, body and then have everyone move forward in that way. So that's a question, essentially. Your Excellency. Is she muted again? Hold on. Your Excellency. Yes. Uh, Raymond, you are so right. You are so right. According to our Constitutive Act, uh, if all the positions were to be filled, that's exactly how the system is supposed to work, where we have um, state representatives in the case of the United States. We have, first of all, global representatives, then state representatives, then regional, uh, regional representatives uh, you know, worldwide. So within Europe as a region, we then have country representatives but we are nowhere near filling all those roles. So that's why a lot of the things are ending up being done centrally because we don't have all the different positions filled as you will see from um, those who are going to have access to our annual report. The team is huge, but still when you look at we're trying to reach the entire world, it's really a drop in the bucket, huge as it already is, but you are quite right. So I'm not sure in your case, Back again to what I'm saying, building that, um, uh, that brick house on the hill. Uh, you have a role to play here in terms of uh, organizing what we have already, even though originally the numbers are not there yet. What would be ideal is for people to create investment clubs. When you create your investment clubs, then you can pick up that concrete manufacturing business in Accra that only needs 100,000. And before you know it, you can grow yourself to become the next Dangote. This is how practical. This is what the Chinese are doing. I wish I could share with you some of the poorest Chinese I've seen come to Africa. Within 12 months, they are multimillionaires. It's really that simple. So you're quite right. Let's find a way of having these regional uh, entities, investment clubs, or whatever you call them, if, we, if people are ready to organize at a local level, let's facilitate that. But we will only know to the extent that they let us know that they are organized and ready to move on. We have about 38 chapters. Some are small, some are medium. We're hoping we can begin to reach out to them and encourage them to organize themselves into investment clubs. Like I said, we will be having these offerings, particularly when it comes to the building of Wakanda. Wakanda must be owned by us. So yes, there is need for some form of collaborations. Those in California, create your own club. You can raise the money that you need. 
now that you have the list of the offerings. The list will continue to grow. We haven't even uploaded what, what Zambia has because we are not quite there yet. We are not ready to cover you, but we can cover you in Cape Coast. When we are prepared to cover you in, in, in Zambia, we'll open up the opportunities in, in Zambia. When we are prepared to cover you in Tanzania, we'll open up the opportunities in Tanzania. But the opportunities, the plan is to keep showing you the opportunities, giving you ample time to really bring your groups together. Invest and you will have Professor Asamoah now joined by uh, Sister Phyllis um, and the other team members here in, in Texas. We have Brother, brother Clifford. Uh, so we got a whole uh, uh, legal team, but I think there will be a few that are concentrating on the businesses in, in, in the US uh, we'll need some lawyers from Europe to represent those coming out of Europe. Believe it or not, we have a lot of uh, diaspora in China right now. Uh, so we need to have some representation uh, once we begin to have people from China, because we need to know uh, how to do business in that particular country and how you uh, link over to the, to, to the African continent. So just to give an idea of, of how we hope all of it will come together. So this is a monster. I want everybody to be aware of that. What we're trying to do is a monster. It's like a two-year-old trying to eat an elephant. You know, it's, 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 it's not easy, but we're going to start with the, with the first bite. So little by little, as we can finish and accomplish this one, we, we deal with that. As we can finish and accomplish this one, we deal with it. So don't expect to have the whole package to be together. As you can imagine, the world of Black people all over the world, that is not and is a thing to do, but we're determined it'll get done. There was another question. I hope I answered your question, Raymond. There was another question before this one. Um, oh, also Sister Phyllis had made a comment that there's a need for follow-up, absolutely. So we will make sure there's a follow-up uh, in the next three to four weeks, so we can really streamline. If we can get all these numbers together very quickly, we can actually do another follow-up hopefully in a couple of weeks. So as soon as the legal team is ready with the portfolios, we need to come back so you all can be clear in terms of what your, your uh, investment level is. Uh, so you can take advantage uh, of what is on the ground in Cape Coast, Cape Coast when we go there in August. I can't remember there's the a question about, example. There's a question from somebody from Germany about uh, Expo being another region, I think. The That's Expo, the, no, the Expo is for everybody. The expo is for every diaspora around the world. So even if, even if you live in Germany, you can still participate. You can become an investor. So now our responsibility is to now reach out to our diaspora in Europe. Let's see if we can find lawyers in Europe to facilitate any businesses coming out of Europe. Is there anything that needs to be done in Europe? But Professor Asamoah also, he can do some of the research. It'll always be good if we could have some European people, legal advisors from Europe to, to be part of the, of the, uh, of the team that's uh, rolling out these portfolios. But yes, this is for every diaspora around the world. Anything ADDI does, we may be headquartered here in the United States, but this is for everybody around the world. When we go to Africa, we are all going to Africa. So we're all going to invest. The rest of the world is already going to Africa to invest. So it's the same process. If you want to go to invest in Africa, get on the plane. You can either do it by yourself, in which case you're going to run into all kinds of roadblocks, or you can, you can be part of ADDI. When we go to Cape Coast, Ghana, you're going to find out exactly how investing in Ghana is done and the many other parts of Africa that we are going to be going to. Thank you, Excellency. The next question is coming from Rose Juma, J-U-M-A. Please unmute. Rose. Can you speak, please? Is she unmuted? Yeah, she's unmuted, I can see that, yes. But I don't see her mic uh, active. Rose Juma, we can't hear you. Okay, I'll get the next person. Yeah. Let me get uh, Mr. I think it was Mr. Jimmy Katuta. Are you still here? 
I saw your name, it, it flashed away just a minute ago. Mr. Jimmy Katuta, please unmute. Yes, I'm still here. All right, uh, thank you. Bear with me there. Okay, there we go. Uh, thank you, thank you for the opportunity, Sister Sylvia, and Your Excellency, like I always say, it's just so uh, refreshing to, to see you and to listen to your plans, what you have uh, going on for us here in the diaspora as well as Africa. Uh, my question is, I just came back from Uganda a few days ago uh, with some investors, and we're looking to go to Zambia in the next seven days. And I was wondering, um, in light of what's happening here, and if I miss some of the, maybe some of my questions may already have been answered. If that's the case, I apologize. But my question is, if I go, which I intend to go to Ghana now, is there a point of contact there that we can introduce to our investors because we're, we're bringing a few of our investors from the U.S. with us? Is there a point of contact there or is that something that we need to strategize from here before we go to uh, Ghana? That is my question. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Um, in terms of strategizing before you go to Ghana, I think um, in, in this particular case, you could actually request a special uh, Zoom meeting between yourself, your team, Professor Asamoa, and, uh, and Nana Abukase. Now, in this case, I would also ask that Sister Phyllis uh, be on the call so we can look at you guys. What do you have? What are you looking for? Let's see if we can put a special uh, program for you. If you are going outside the time that we are going, we will be willing to do the same with Zambia because we're already in, con in communication with the Zambia, Zambian Development uh, Agency. They, we're actually in the process of getting our MOU signed. Um, it's going through the, the governmental processes, but we can still facilitate. We will reach out to them what the arrangement that we are going to have once the MOU is signed with Zambia, ADDI is gonna become a member of the Zambian Development Agency. The Zambian Development Agency <clears throat> is, is the entity, is the Kwesa government entity that is responsible for categorizing all the investment opportunities in Zambia. I will tell you, he told me something that broke my heart. He said, Ambassador, every day I go to my office, I have Chinese lined up outside my office wanting yeah. to take advantage of the investment opportunities in Zambia. Not even local Zambians are lining up, let alone Africans. Of course, forget the diaspora. The opportunities are there. So if you become a member of ZD, ZDA, then you have access and assistance and facilitation from ZDA. Their job is to make sure that you are properly registered that you go through the process, you are exposed to the, to the investment opportunities, but you have to become a member. What we have negotiated is that ADDI will become a member. And then once you are a member of ADDI, you no longer need to pay a fee. You will have access to opportunities to invest in Zambia. They will facilitate you. You are covered by the fee that ADDI would have paid to cover you as a member. So. That makes things a lot easier. But until our, our MOU is signed, until our agreement is signed, for now, we will be happy to recommend you and ask them to chaperone your group and advise you and assist you to the extent that they can, because that is our job as ADDI. Think of ADDI as the mother who will always be there to look out for her children, no matter where you go. So we thank you for going to Zambia. And yes, we are looking forward to having you in Ghana as well. But we are here to facilitate. Let us know if you need a separate conversation. Our sister Ola can set up that Zoom meeting and we can help you to the extent that we can. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the next question will come from Jacqueline Burnett. You unmute, please. Yeah, thank you, excellent. And I'm from I'm from Britain and from London, from Luton. And I just wanted to say I, I'm getting a feeling sometimes that we're forgotten the African Caribbean in the UK. And sometimes it feels quite a lot that it's America, America. And I just need 
ADDI in the U, where you are to adapt things appropriately to our name, to our needs. Because you've got to remember, we've experienced the Windrush scandal and maybe people in the Americas missed it, but we're still going through it right now. Um, and I'm one of the ambassadors in, in the UK that have worked with the Home Office. So right now, ADDI and what you're doing is excellent for my generation, but the youth don't understand it. They're getting kidnapped. We've got children that's been kidnapped in London last week, attempted abduction. So parents are struggling. And when you say membership, and we only can gain access if we're members. People don't see that they're struggling to pay bills right now. So I'm not saying that the condition in America is not bad, but our, our needs are different. And I'm just asking you as mother to look to the children's need and accommodate accordingly. I'm for it. I'm a counsellor, but I know the hostile environment that we're living. Yeah. And people are just so petrified. What I talk about, I want to take our people out, but they can't, they can't see the promised land because they're trying to survive here. So we need all that lovely visionary stuff to impact on them. How is it relevant to them here when they're running the street and doing gang culture? Please, please find a way to make it the package. Don't seem so aloof to the middle class Americans that are so rich, but we got people here in, in Britain on, on benefit and can't relate to it. That is my plea. The acorn and the oak. We need the acorn all over in order to get the oak trees over in Africa and here. Please. Thank you. Thank you so much, my sister. <clears throat> Your point is very well taken. Remember what I say. It's like a two year old a two-year-old trying to eat an elephant. We will eventually get there. What we need right now is a strong ADDI team in the United Kingdom. That we have not been able to do. We've had people reach out, but not a whole lot has been done. So really, that one, I'm going to have to throw it right back to you guys. And I'm going to say you because you're the one in front of me. But you all need to organize. ADDI is now here. You organize, we continue to spread the word. What we are doing now is spreading the word. And look what we have accomplished in about a year. ADDI has only been in ex existence for a year. So we all need to talk. It's about spreading the word. Everybody get on your phone. On a daily basis, reach out to 10 people in your contacts. Think of the many people you could spread the word. Ten people in your contact. Tell your friends. They should tell somebody else. And at the end of the day, the reality is, if we end up with a very large diaspora fund, that's really what is needed. It's about money. We can now talk about the legacy projects. Those kids you are talking about. Let's send them to Africa for a, for a month. Let's take them out of the environment they are in. But everything sees takes money. And that's why if a dollar is what you have, go to ouraddi.org and donate that dollar. If all of us can donate what we can, is that mindset. Because sometimes we want things to happen, but we are not, a, we're not prepared to pay. That's where we are falling short as black people because we are programmed to always expect somebody to give us the money. It doesn't work like that. Whoever pays you, controls you. We are saying we no longer wish to be controlled because we know we are capable of pulling our funds together. We know we are capable, we have the money. It is just that we have been pro programmed to not trust each other, to not believe in ourselves. So sis, <clears throat> a thousand more people like you with $10. Can you imagine what we can do in the communities? A thousand more people like you. You saw one project for $3,000. Can you all not come together and take that project? Like I say, I have seen the poorest Chinese being smuggled into Africa on raggedy old boats. And in no time, they are employing thousands of Africans. Isn't that sad? But that's the reality. So what ADDI is saying, let's think outside the box. 
at the end of the day, if we do anything, it's about having the numbers and the numbers coming up with small amounts of money. A million people with $10, that's 10 million. Right now, right here, can we not find 10 mil a million people with $10 from all of Europe, all of the United States, all of the Caribbean, all of South America? Can we not open a bank, a diaspora bank, once we have enough money in the Caribbean? So we can begin to fund projects in the Caribbean. So the Chinese won't take over Caribbean like they have. Can we not have a bank of the diaspora in South America so we can begin to fund black people in South America? That's how we begin to bring true change. That's how we begin to have true economic empowerment and liberation. It starts with money, it starts with the numbers. When it's all boiled down, if you believe in our Africa, if you are concerned about George Floyd, if you are concerned about the black people being mistreated all over the world, just give ADDI what you can. That's how we fight back. Let's pull together unity of purpose. But your point is well taken, my sister. Let's continue to remind each other of what is happening to our children, to ourselves, to black people all around the world. The carnage continues and only we can stop it. And the only way to stop it is to unite. Thank you, Excellency. Jacqueline, please go on our website and uh, look up our UK Wales chapter. If you're not a member of our U UK Wales chapter, please join it. There are sector leaders needed on there. So if you have the time, please do that. Thank you. Uh, th the next question is coming from Samuel Smith. Please unmute. Okay, I think I have. Thank you. All righty. Uh, good afternoon. And I wanted to say to uh, Ambassador Chiambori, your book was very informative. Uh, I've gifted it to several of my family members and friends. And uh, you're absolutely right. It's about spreading the word. And I agree 100% with that. Uh, I also uh, have a question here. Oh, and by the way, I'm in Houston, Texas. I would like to possibly start a chapter here. So I'd like to get more information on that. I understand there is one in Dallas. And, uh, but my initial question is, uh, are there any safeguards in place, for, to, in place to address any possible corruption with, with the money? That's all I have. Well, let, let me tell you, my brother. First of all, let me start by telling you that I started ADDI in March of last year. I've never taken a penny. I have no intentions of benefiting from ADDI. If I am going to, be, I've never been paid. I have no intentions of getting paid because I believe in what we need to do. I believe to whom much is given, much is expected. I have to lead by example. We have to lead by example. Any opportunities that are going, to re, re, uh, are going to come up, I am going to invest just like any of you. When the package is put out, the same way that you're gonna buy your shares, if I want to invest, that's the exact same way that I'm gonna buy my shares. In spite of all the work I'm putting in, I am giving for our children and generations to come. We are calling for the people with the same spirit. I'm gonna share something with all of you just you understand the team that we have put together so far. There was an opportunity that we could have gotten into a program that was running till end of June. Well, something happened. That program was gonna end quickly because some, some gigantic entity was gonna buy all the bonds to the tune of 5 billion. So they called me to say, Ambassador, this program that was supposed to run till end of June is now gonna end much, much further. If the diaspora could just come up with 350,000, maybe we could try and apply for 100 million uh, portfolio. And they were giving me a few days to come up with 350,000. And initially the first instinct was like, oh my God, okay, that's over, we can't do it. But I went to bed and when I woke up in the morning, I said to myself, really, we are going to miss out on accessing such a large amount of money, over 350,000. It needs to start with me. So I said, what can I do? My husband and I, we had said, we're always gonna give in time and that we, we are no longer um, you know, making any money. We are retired. 
we are living off of our retirement and that we will always give time for our contribution. But this moment was calling for money. So I sat down with my husband and I said, we can't go out and ask other people to give us money if we don't put our money first. So just so you know, my husband and I, we came up with 100,000. And then I called for an emergency board meeting. And within two hours, I repeat, two, in fact, less than two hours. Because the rest of the hour, we were just crying and, 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 and wiping tears of joy. In one hour, the board members that came, they gave me the difference of the money. Are you with me, my brother? Yeah. When you have people who are on the same page, who understand they wanted nothing, the money was coming into the account so fast, they shut down our uh, credit card. They were taking the money, but they were not giving it to us. They weren't sure where the money is coming from. So I had to give them all kinds of proofs that I'm real, that there are no shenanigans going on. So because they held our money, we were going to miss our deadline. Guess what the board members did? So many of them called me. Ambassador, we have accounts with Bank of America. We will give you the money. You can refund us when the credit card people release our money. There was too much money getting into the account in two days. Three days, we had more than we needed. More money came in. Are you getting my point, my son? None of them want anything. That's the team we're building. Right. They want nothing. And we're cultivating people like that. I can tell you the ADDI board, the ADDI team, they are incredible people. They want nothing except what's right for us black people. And those are the people we're cultivating. And we're cultivating them by showing them through our own deeds. That's what it's about. And that's what leadership is about. And we're demanding that. <clears throat> and I can tell you, as long as I can breathe, there will not be corruption. And I, I can tell you the people who know me, ask all, I am shrewd businesswoman. I will go, I will fight you for a dollar, because that's what it takes. So I will do my part to make sure there's no corruption and I want nothing. I don't want to benefit from ADDI. And that's all of you, you have my word. That will not change. Let me test for the validity. Keep corruption out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me test for the validity of what our excellency has said in all truthfulness and in accuracy. It is true, so let's move on. Thank you very much. Um, we need to shorten our, we, our time. We have been here for three hours. So let's take two, five more questions and close this out. All right, thank you so very much. Yes, and I also back what Her Excellency said, it's all true and nothing but the truth. Our next question is from Pilar Newsom. Uh, thank you, your, your Majesty and Your Excellency and the whole ADDI team. I just had a quick question about, um, is there like, if we wanna to go to Ghana for the expo, is there like a hotel set aside where we can, or we're just on our own to find wherever we can find we, hotel? We actually, we actually are assembling a team of travel agents that are going to look into that. Nana Bokase has already uh, blocked one hotel that's okay. going to be able to ac accommodate us. But then we have some, uh, diaspora groups that are wanting homes so they can work uh, longer than, they can come together longer than uh, the hotel uh, uh, boardrooms will be open. So we are also looking at renting some uh, residences. So as we get more and more people start registering, the, the accommodation is not a problem. Because okay, where we are going you. in Cape Coast, it's a tri-city area. There is Cape Coast City, there is uh, Elmina City, which is only like 15, 20 miles away. And there's also um, uh, Asebu City, Asebu Town. So there's plenty. And uh, Nana Obukase is under control. Yes, that under control. Thank you very much. Thank First of all, everything will be... Oh, sorry. Our, everything will be put on our website, on our landing page. You'll be up the hotel details there that we'll, you know, we'll get from, from Cape Coast as well. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Donna Cox. Donna, please unmute. Hello, am I on mute? 
Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, good, e good, e good evening, family. Um, can't see me too well, but I got all sober here, and I don't die and had it since 12. So I'm here in Ghana and loving my people. And I just want to say this is my first, was my third time in Ghana. I am moving here. I've been here since January. This is something that we have should, should have done a long time ago. So I just want to say I am here now. Uh, I'm in the process of trying to move here. So I just want to see how I can help while I'm here. I've done a couple of notes in the chat. You guys can go through and see what I do. I am a great, magnificent, wonderful woman created by everything, including God's wish for me to be here with all of the skills I got from America. So I want to put them into use right now in any level, starting with 40 years of my life being in the law industry. So I'd love to work with Sister uh, Powell uh, and the brother Asam, As uh, Amosa. Uh, so just contact me any way we can and everything you're there, I'm here for you <coughs> till I'm gone. So that's all I have to say. Peace and love. Sis Sister Donna, yes. I think again, this is exactly the spirit we're looking for, sis. You just make me feel so good. Yeah. I'm when you, we're talking about bring that brick, you know? Because uh, you're holding that brick that we need to build this house. So now yes. here we go. We got another member of the team. And now look at you. You'll be working from one angle. You'll be mobilizing business people from wherever you live. Sister Phyllis will be mobilizing businesses from wherever she is. This is what it's all about. That's right. Absolutely. So absolutely. <laughs> Can we make sure? <laughs> Do you live in Ghana or you live in the U.S.? I'm, I, I'm, I say I live in Ghana now because I just got my apartment for two years. I'm supposed to go back in June, but I'm going for my extension right now through immigration so I don't have to leave until I'm ready. So I'm here. Wonderful. So do you, where do you live? Do you live in Accra or Cape Coast? I'm in the Amrai area, a little up from Ashi. Okay. Then at some point, <clears throat> you probably need to take a trip to Cape Coast and meet with brother, Professor Asamoah, so you all Absolutely. can begin to strategize and continue to, to create this formidable legal team. That's Absolutely. what it's about. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, thank you so much. Sister thank Donna you. Cox, I, I am yes, putting I'm... your name down. Can you please post your, your email so Professor yes. Asamoah can reach out to you? Uh, let's Absolutely. also uh, make sure you pick up Professor Asamoah's email. I will. Thank you all. Peace and love. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, sister. Asamoah, please share your email again because I know it's way, way on top. Yeah, it's yes. we Thank are you. law forever at Gmail. Can you just type com. it in there? Please type it in the in the chat for me. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, ma'am, ma uh, Donna, for your question. Uh, the next person is Stanley. Please unmute. Stanley Sar Sarpong. Yes. Hi. How are you doing? Thank you so much, um, Your Excellency, Arikana, Your Majesty, and everybody on the ADDI team. I'm half Ghanaian. Um, I'm super excited about this. I've been sharing with so many uh, peers. And for me, it's amazing to see how so many of you are here and, and excited to do this. What I would love to see is more younger people joining as well. So I'm definitely um, uh, committed. To, to volunteering. I'm a former Googler, content creator, um, and also entrepreneur. So wherever you know you can use me, that'll be wonderful. I have one uh, quick question, and that is about the internet infrastructure and how we could possibly sort of accelerate that. Because with the membership and all the funds, I'm thinking, imagine if we create a fund uh, where everybody can contribute to create um, you know, more fiber optic network that everybody can benefit from, whether you want to work with a satellite office in Ghana, for example, or want to establish your business in Ghana, having, you know, superior internet is super important. Just to give you a simple example, I want to hire people in Ghana, but they're too expensive for me. Why? Because if someone is on a 10 Mbps internet speed versus someone in the US or in Europe on 100 Mbps, that means that although the person, let's say, would cost $5 an hour, a student in Ghana versus someone $15 in the US, that person in Ghana would take 10 times longer to finish the same job. So that means 10 times five is $50 versus $15 that I would pay the person in the US. So you can imagine the moment that we improve the internet infrastructure, how many more job opportunities we will all create and we can create the next Singapore. So I'm really excited and I wanna be part of this. So thank you so much for your time. 
Ashe. Thank you, son. I think you're bringing a very interesting um, uh, 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 subject. Just so you know, we have an IT team. The IT team is actually already talking to another diaspora entity that's going to be looking to upgrading um, our um, connectivity, our cellular connectivity uh, in, uh, in Ghana. So you are quite right. Everything that we are going to be doing, the engineers have made it very clear <clears throat> that we must have 5G. There's even a talk of having uh, fiber optics now. Uh, it's now going to be in the cloud because all the fiber optic networks are getting saturated. And so we are on it because the university is going to be needing uh, very upgraded connectivity. If we're going to have a computer lab, the current, current structure cannot, will not be able to support. We're going to be doing robotics. We're introducing robotic surgery to, to, uh, to Cape Coast. The, uh, the doctors are already working on that. The current um, cellular networks are not going to be able to support that. We are even going all the way to talk, talk about housing, our own, uh, having our own data center. So son, you are quite right. We need you to join our IT team. Uh, <laughs> Sister Sylvia, if you could please post um, our brother Jota's email to all make right. sure he becomes part of the IT team. And yes, we would like to find a way of using your experience with Googling, how we can reach more young people because at the end of the day, everything that we are doing is about you young people. You are the ones who are going to be enjoying Africa. You are the ones who want to get all these opportunities. So look at how you just brought in an element that we weren't even talking about. So we appreciate you. We appreciate your viewpoint. So please join the IT team and be the youth leader. You can help us mobilize more young people with all the fresh ideas. More importantly, more importantly, we need you because the IT team is going to be opening an innovation center that's already in the strategic planning and we're looking to put money aside to, to start an innovation center so bright minds like you can come together and just solve Africa's problems because I know we can. So thank you so much, son. You're quite right. Uh, let's make sure that uh, uh, Stanley Sapong is in touch with Brother Jote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stanley, you're based out of Ghana? May want to unmute him. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you so much. No, so um, I'm what they call a digital nomad, so I travel around the world. But um, no, I'm, yeah, I'm, asking you, I'm asking you so that we see if there's a chapter where you are, because you've mentioned a very good point of recruiting the sure, young sure. people. Just to be very clear, I will be in Ghana um, around July or August. And I'm living in Portugal, Amsterdam, and Miami. So that's yes. where I'm based. All right. I'm posting my email here, chapters at ADDI.org. Please get in touch with me. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So we would walk, you can plan coming with us to Ghana so you can be part of the conversations surrounding the Innovation Center. We need young people like you. So Thank please you. plan on joining us when we go to Ghana. Definitely. Definitely. Thank, Thank you, you very much. The next question will be for Isaac. Isaac, please unmute yourself. I already unmuted you. Isaac, are you still there? Okay, I'm here. Um, uh, thank you so much, Sylvia and Ambassador Arikana. Uh, I may not have understood, um, maybe this was discussed prior to my uh, joining the, uh, the meeting. But um, the, the concept appears to lean very much on formal business entities. But we know that a majority of our people are in the informal sector. So how do we get our mothers and the villages you know, to benefit from this particular, this particular opportunity that is coming in from the diaspora? And um, this question is informed by the fact that I'm, I'm from Southern Cameroons and uh, we have over 6,000 refugees in Ghana. And we've, we've been trying to help, we can help some of these refugees find their feet uh, in Ghana. So how do we bring people like this who are maybe not even inside the informal sector who don't have 
a legal status in Ghana, but who uh, have skills that can uh, benefit uh, this project of homecoming. Thank you. You, <clears throat> you are quite right. I think we feel blessed that uh, we were invited to start our city of return in Cape Coast, uh, Ghana. Cape Coast is just an amazing area. There is a teaching, un there is a university, there is a technical college, there is a teaching hospital, there is a hospital, there is a nursing school, there is a marine academy, and of course we have the dungeons to study the history. We could not have gotten to a better place than everything that we need. All we need is to create an environment that unleashes the entrepreneurship spirit in our young people. Between Ghana and, and Nigeria, some of the brightest minds are coming out of those two countries. We just need to create that environment. Right now, one of the people who's going to be um, part of our uh, innovation center is a young man called Kevin. We picked him up on the internet. He was in a village in Ghana and he made a little car out of a motorcycle engine. And he, him and his friends would pile up on that little car and he would drive around the village at age 14. Think of that bright mind. He's now 17. If he could just get a little help. So we have adopted him. He now has a nice laptop and he has programs uh, loaded onto that laptop so he can continue his creativity. He's still in high school. He has a mentor assigned, a gentleman out of Europe and another guy out of the US. Both of them are working with Kevin. When our center is opened, he's going to be spending holidays at the center. And the hope is that he will continue and come to go to college in Cape Coast. But we are going to be opening what we call Kevin's Garage as part of our innovation center to allow Kevin to do his creativity. So there's so many Kevins in Africa and we intend to capture as many of them as we can and create an environment for them to innovate. Right now, through our mining and industry, they are putting together a plan to start a manufacturing plant using plastics. Plastics to be used to manufacture parts. They are going to categorize what they think are the parts that are most needed, parts that are keeping agriculture from moving forward, parts that are keeping uh, medical equipment to lie fallow in the basements of hospitals across the continent, parts that are keeping cars that could be driven because those parts are coming from outside Africa. We, didn't, we need not import them. We can manufacture them. So in fact, our director for mining, he was a young man during the uni unilateral declaration of independence for Zimbabwe in the 1980s when there were sanctions for Rhodesia, in the 1970s rather. There were sanctions against Rhodesia. People are not aware. What Ian Smith did was to regroup people like him through the iron and steel company that we had in Zimbabwe, Rhodesians manufactured everything they could not import. That's how Ian Smith survived. So the young man is saying, I have seen it done. We can do it. So he's leading that process of establishing that manufacturing plant to manufacture parts that are needed using plastics. And who is going to come in and work with that? It's our youth. So lots of inventions. So yes, my brother, we are doing our part. And if you want to, be, to join that team, by all means, please, Sister, all, uh, sister uh, Sylvia, can we please give him, put him in touch with Brother Mapundera? My so name? you can also help us mobilize these young people and let's get as many of them to just simply say, we want you to open up your mind, let your creativity run amok, and we're there to support you. It's gonna take everybody doing their part, but yes, your point is very well taken and it is needed. And we are thinking along those lines as well. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, the next one, it's only initials. I'm only taking two more questions. I see a lot of hands up, but Her Excellency has another meeting she has to get to. So I'm gonna take the two last questions. The initials are K-F-K-A-W-I. Oh, thank you. Thank you, there you go. K F K A W. I don't know why I've given that name, but my name is Lamek Maaj. You didn't change it on your phone. <laughs> nah, anyway, it's me. Anyway, don't worry. I will change it later. My name is Lamek Maaj. I'm in the UK. Firstly, 
I don't like to sound gloomy, but I just want to know uh, whether AEDDI has taken into consideration this current uh, pandemic in as far as coming to cap cost for this expo. Because here in UK, they are cut the categorizing the countries to saying one is red zone, one is yellow zone, one is green zone. So I would like to know whether cap cap cost is also under any other zone that might be considered to be uh, uh, in the pandemic area. Okay, that's said and done. Firstly, also, for, I forgot to, to give my hearty heartfelt um, liking to what um, uh, Honorable Jomori is doing for us or what he has, he has done and grouped you as, as a, a very, very good team. Just looking forward to, to bringing Africa to its rightful place. About this, uh, I heard something in the, maybe I didn't hear it properly, that uh, there shall be loan advanced to people with project. How does that go about? That's my question. Excellency. Okay, talking about COVID, what we are hoping in the US now, for those who are coming from the US, everybody can now be vaccinated. Vaccines are now free. The problem the U.S. is running into right now is people not going to get the vaccines. They are afraid they may have to throw away vaccines. So those coming from the U.S. who would encourage everybody to get vaccinated, uh, the numbers are getting better. I was listening today, the, uh, the uh, uh, San Francisco uh, Hospital, for the first time since June of last year, they don't have not even a single COVID patient. Numbers are getting better, but we encourage everybody to get vaccinated. But secondly, Ghana is not, I repeat, Ghana is not in the red zone. Knock on wood, Ghana has done okay, um, but we keep our fingers crossed, of course, this is COVID, nobody knows. Uh, nowhere have we said we are going to be giving loans. What we said is that we are pulling our monies together for now until our fund has really grown to where we can begin to then loan money. For now, we have a fund that we are hoping to use those funds to fund projects for building Wakanda. But the project will have to continue to raise its own money. So for discussion purposes, so you have a window into how we intend to continue to sustain ourselves. We are looking to investing in banking. We are also looking to investing in mining. Mining is a big one. Mining is the fastest way a lot of foreigners, particularly the Chinese, and of course the Europeans who've been there forever, and the Indians, they are making serious money out of gold, out of uh, diamonds, out of platinum. Just to give you an idea, if you were to start with say $10 million, that can buy you about 250 kilos of gold. You can spend that money within 30 days, you can more than double it by simply buying gold. Because you're buying it, from the Africans for like say $40,000 a kilo. Immediately, if you picture a situation, you buy, and I'm gonna use a big figure like a thousand kilos. If you buy a thousand kilograms of gold in Ghana, you pay $40 million. You catch a flight from Ghana to Dubai, six hours. By the time you arrive in Dubai, you are sitting at 60 million your gold will be bought within an hour. People are not aware of that. You buy your gold in Ghana for 40 million. And by the time you get to Dubai six hours later by flight, you are sitting at 60 million. And then you keep doing it. That's how the Tiger Six Nations, the Hong Kongs, the Malaysians were built with paper money, gold, monetization, standby letters of credit. You get 75 to 100% LME, uh, loan, loan to value. So there are all these other things that the finance people are, are talking about. The, those are the plans in terms of how we're going to sustain ourselves. But uh, I'm just giving you a window as to what 
uh, the long-term plans are. Once we get to where our fund is well capitalized, you're quite right, the plan is designed to start being able to fund some projects. But for now, we want people to contribute. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I'm gonna take the last uh, question. Sorry, there's about 14, 15 hands left. What we're gonna do is when we have the next meeting, I will try my best to see if I can remember your names. If you do attend the next meeting for uh, the Trade Expo, then maybe your questions can be fielded. If not, please send your questions to info, info at raddi.org. I'm gonna put the information here once I call on the last speaker. You can write to info, info at raddi.org or investments with an S at raddi.org. Last but not least, let me call upon Leila Settles, please, to give us the last question. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know, um, soon as I received the email on the investments, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, we, I have a Facebook group with my family and it's, they're international. So I actually started talking to them and about a group of us will be coming to Ghana for the, um, expo. But the question is, even just now I have my cousin just sending me a text from California. Um, and my uh, brother is in Japan. So we're coming from so many different places um is there something that we can do as a collective um because um we're coming with um intentions of doing investments what i can tell you my dear daughter is that when we go for the expo, there are going to be three groups of people. One group, we are asking if you are a youth, if you are a woman, and you are interested in investing in Africa, go to the expo with your $1,000, with your $5,000. Remember my friend, Selma Salifu. I keep going to her. Oh keep it God, simple, okay. keep it real. When you okay. go into the expo, these women, uh -huh. These youth are going to be with their boots. Okay. Walk around, talk to them, see what okay. they have, see if you can find a partner. Okay. That's all I'm asking. So go prepared with your money at whatever uh -huh. investment level from the uh -huh. smallest to the largest. Uh -huh. But just go prepared. We will be exposing you to the youth and the women and the middle to, to large businesses plus complete new businesses that are not even uh, registered. It's just that there's a need. But go with an open mind, prepared to find yourself an investment partner, kind of like you would have with my girlfriend, Selma Salifo. There are many Selmas out there, not only in Ghana, but all over the continent. So come to Africa with an open mind and be prepared to find a partner. You will be amazed at what you can accomplish, especially that ADDI will have your back. Nana Abukase is gonna have your back. Uh, Professor Asamoah, you will have a team that will cover you that you never have to worry about. Uh, how do I navigate the system? That's what this is about. Okay. Thank you so very much. Uh, Your Excellency, with all due respect, I would ask uh, His Royal Highness, if he's right on, still on to give us some closing remarks and then um, you can uh, close us out completely. Your Highness. Could you unmute him, please? Oh, yeah. he's unmuted. He's unmuted, thank you. Okay. Well, uh, it's been two, three hours of uh, very good, soul enriching information. Uh, we've been listening in, we've been having discussions on it. And uh, we say thank you to everyone who has spend his time today or her time to be part of this very wonderful initiative. We say a big thank you to Brother Mason Kasue, to you, Sister Sylvia, to Amira, and then to all the team, the ADDI team, and to you for listening. I think this is the beginning. 
Uh, there's no been any such time where for the past 400 years, the issues of uh, our people has been projected and has been accepted, has been mentioned until quite recently with the emergence of Her uh, Excellency Ambassador Arikana and also thanks to uh, the Black Panther movie, Wakanda, and then thanks to His Excellency President Akufu Addo, the year of 10. This has given us the basis to re-emerge, to find ourselves once again. And we are not alone. We have a leader who has sacrificed her entire life to ensure that this happens. I'm proud and also happy to say that all the kings in the central region, in the Cape Coast area, are very excited about what she brings to Cape Coast. And we support her, we love her. We want the diaspora to come to Cape Coast. We want to set an example where other kingdoms across the African continent will learn from. We can change our own story. No one will do this for us. I want to thank Brother Yofi, the chairman for the Cape Coast Regional Chamber of Commerce, Sister Benedicta, and uh, Michael, all the wonderful people who are helping push this agenda. To you, Professor Anessa Samoa, I know the value you bring. We say a big thank you to you. Let's do this. We can only do this for ourselves. And to you, especially Your Excellency Ambassador Arikana Chamberakwao, whenever I do libation as my normal routine every morning, I mention your name. May the Spirit of the Almighty guide you. May the Spirit of our ancestors protect you. May you continue to love Africa and may you continue to sacrifice for us. We love you. This is big. This is big. This is bigger than all of us. Africa need you. Africa need this to succeed. So there will be an example. With that example, we cannot do anything. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you, Renakwa. Thank you, Rabbi Cohen. Thank you, all the wonderful people, the team at Cape Coast, Amabawa. And thank you, Nana Otujando, for coming from all the way Accra from Asasi Radio. And thank you for your commitment to our program, the Wakanda One Expo. Uh, this morning, we also see the deal with the Cape FM. They are partnering us for the Expo. We, we, we're moving forward. Uh, thanks to uh, Nana Otujando, who came from Accra. He joined me this morning in a meeting. We were able to seal a deal with the Cape FM, the biggest FM station in Cape Coast. They want to partner us, and then we'll, we'll, make, we'll, we'll, we'll have this expo. We'll begin to tell our own stories. We are beginning to create our own platforms. Thank you, Your Excellency. I can't thank you enough. And uh, you all have a very lovely weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Royal Highness, Your Excellency. Thank you, Your Majesty, for, the, for those wonderful closing remarks. Uh, thank you to the entire team in, uh, in Cape Coast. Uh, thank you to the wonderful uh, ADDI team. You all work so tirelessly to make sure that these events are a resounding success. You work tirelessly to continue to push the agenda forward. Thank you to all the board members, to all the uh, chapter leaders around the world, to all the, uh, the, the, the listeners, the, the ADDI members, the ADDI family around the globe. I want to thank you for taking the time to come to this uh, important webinar to discuss such important events about us and how we can take ourselves out of these conundrums that we find ourselves in as a people. I look forward to all of you joining us as we go to Cape Coast. I also look forward to us regrouping again uh, in the immediate two to four weeks for the continuous conversation where Professor Asamoah will come back and really fine tune the conversations. Now that he has a good team around him, we will be, uh, I'm hoping that the next conversation will give an even clearer picture of how everything is going to unfold as we go to Ghana. That includes accommodation. We're gonna talk about accommodation and we're gonna talk about transport uh, and uh, what uh, program our um, travel agents would have put together. They too will do a presentation We'll also get a presentation about the hotel accommodation so people can be clear about how we are going to go home. 
Thank you also very much. Have a wonderful weekend till we talk again. Benson, thank you, Excellency. I don't think I can say anything more than that. I really so much appreciate you. Let me take some uh, uh, thank you also for participating. One thank you, Amira, for just taking a quick, uh, I, I ambushed her, told her the support I needed and she took over. So thank you very much, Amira. Sylvia, it's always wonderful. Your Excellency, Your Majesty, I cannot thank you enough and I look forward to coming to Ghana. We are looking forward to coming to, to, to Cape Coast. Diaspora, get ready, get energized. Let's go invest to the people. If we don't, the Chinese you don't like, the, the Westerners you don't like, the Northerners, the Eastern, they will take over. So let's help our people. We gotta do it. If we don't do it, nobody can do it with that. Thank you so much. God bless. Visit our website at www.addi.org to register and uh, go under events to see the things that are upcoming under ADDI so you stay on point in real time. And like our director said, we are energized. Ghana, let's go. God bless each and every one of us. Your, uh, your Excellency, Your Majesty, bye-bye. Goodbye, team. Yes, yes.